Good evening, and thank you for joining us today. Hello there. <laughs> it's Monday. It's a whole new world. It's not a brand new world. That was a dumb musical. It's Monday, March 30th, and welcome to National Doctor's Day. Dr. Tony is in the house. I will not be conducting any testing in the basement tonight here. Not, not basement. In the South Philadelphia Wine Center, the epicenter of fun, gaiety, and merriment here as we all get ready for another month in sequestration. Sort of like a jury that can never make a decision, except they get fed and they get put in hotel rooms. We're sitting in our own damn house for another month. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We've been off for about a week reconfiguring the wine cellar for big, big news. Yes. In fact, Although Robin it's not and I, done yet. No. <laughs> Robin and I, you can see partial construction on the side there. No, we're not building a bookshelf. We're not building another wine cabinet. We are perfectly stocked with wine, at least for now, because I can't drink any wine, because Robin and I are on the keto diet. We are back as Tony Bruno, Robin Austin, big announcement day. Thanks again to everybody who's been checking in on Twitter, where I goof off most of the time and get people triggered and all upset. you got to escape it. Turn your TVs off, not the ones where you're watching us on Twitch.tv. Leave that on. Get all the noise off. Get all the people going crazy off. We know it's crazy out there. Just relax, sit back, and enjoy. For the next two hours, we will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We will control all that you see and do. From the inner mind to the Tony Bruno Show with Miss Robin. So social distancing, I don't need to recap. And if you don't know what social distancing is by now, and about washing your hands and not touching your face, now you can touch your groin area, which a lot of people have been doing a lot during these times at home. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you wash your hands after you touch yourself. And then you can touch oh, yourself again. Yeah. You know, you can do whatever you want. You're in the privacy of your own home. So I'm not going to here to lecture you on what to do. You know what to do. Don't go out and do shots with chicks on a beach out of their assholes. Yeah, I don't get that one. I don't understand. Listen, I did a lot of crazy shit when I was young. I never once thought, hey, let me pour some booze behind a hot chick on a beach who's bending over and then lap it out of her nether regions. I mean, the frontal nether regions, maybe, maybe. But and you the wonder why everybody's regions, sick. Not so bueno. <sighs> so anyway, we will not play the divinals. In fact, we were doing these coronavirus jokes before they were even cool. We were in New York City. In early March, yeah. at the end of February, right? And now New York City is the epicenter of all this stuff. We were there, and we were eat- Luigi and I were eating at a Chinese restaurant. We didn't have bat soup on the menu, thankfully. We avoided that. And by the way, people, I know there's different cultures. Stop eating bats. I don't care where you are. Bats have caused two of the biggest pandemics. I think more than that, actually. Well, at least two most recent ones. Yeah. SARS was caused by bats. Yeah. And now the coronavirus. How about this? It's interesting because... Stop eating bats. Yeah, you talk to um, virologists or virus experts, they they talked about how bats have been one of the animals that have uh, mutated a lot of different viruses. Exactly. And, and for they some, hang in caves yeah. and they eat nasty shit, and then people say, hey, that looks... I get the lobster. See, I always wondered, the first person who ever saw a lobster crawling on the bottom of the ocean, Yeah. Well, and so, you know... I wonder what that tastes like. That's a scary looking son of a bitch down there. I mean, I and then had you somebody, grab it and you take it up. I had somebody explain to me that lobsters are pretty much cockroaches of the sea. They are. So are crabs, <laughs> all the bottom feeders, but which includes case- many of the people on uh, television right now. You talk about bottom feeders. But enough about the media. All those things that we eat now. Somebody had to discover one and look at it and say, I wonder if I get that thing and put it in a, bo- a pot of boiling water and then. Clarify some butter. That some bitch probably tastes good. Mm. Or put some old bay on it, on a crab. And so the same thing happens in countries where they have bats. People eat everything, except Mikey, and he was smart. Mikey was smart. He didn't eat anything until he liked it. But anyway, enough about that. Welcome everybody. We Bearcat told you. AJ's a walk-up sound sounding right now. People are walking in, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to unsheath the official news. It is being released now simultaneously throughout the world. Satellite, s- s- satellite beams are now penetrating every major media outlet. We have somebody very special in studio. 
Exactly right. In fact, CNN is breaking in to their coronavirus coverage to bring this story live to the nation. Next to Drake releasing the picture of his son today, I believe this will be the second biggest story in the world today. Now, first of all, since it is National Doctors Day and we are all about social distancing, let's get out your little measuring tape. Now, here's what I have. Now, anybody who comes, you can see I put the rubber gloves on. In fact, I went out and I found found a box of 200 disposable latex gloves. That would be 100 pair if you're using two at a time. If you're using just one and doing some home examinations of your friends and loved ones, but usually put two on. And we put these on all the time. When Robin and I go out shopping, mm-hmm. got to make sure you're safe out there. Yes, and I carry around a, uh, a container of Lysol wipes, mm-hmm. wipe everything by down. By the way, I was doing the wipes on, on, sh- on shopping carts long before this shit happened. They have them in every supermarket yes. before this. Now that the coronavirus, now they don't have them anymore. You don't find the ones in front of the supermarket because people are stealing them. When they put those Purell pa- yeah, things out there, walking off people just take the whole damn thing and walk out with the damn things. But we want to bring in our special guest to make a special announcement. So, Tony Bruno, I'm Th- going this to... This is breaking news, ladies I'm, I'm going to switch cameras here in a second. As soon as you show everybody our proper social so, distancing techniques. I've had one of these. Of course, these are uh, temperature gauges. Electricians use them. Heating, uh, HVAC people do it. They like you want to see if there's an air leak coming in. But I've been checking Robin. See, look, I got. it looks like I got a bullseye on her head. Yes, don't put so, it in my eyes, though. No, I'm not putting it in your eyes. You're not a cat. Let's see if the cat uh, sees it. Well, no, like, so he's out. He's out. He's sleeping. Like, when the cat doesn't see that rolling in his face, do we get a shot of the uh, kitty? No, there? not okay. right. I don't All have right. that set up. Tony. So Robin's okay. <laughs> Let me get your temperature before we continue. It's in my eyes. No, it's not. It's right in the middle of your, your five head. <sighs> oh. 87.2. So Robin is uh, safe. Let's check the distance now. I do make sure everybody has one of these. This is a nice 25 footer. Got this at Home Depot yesterday. Quality item, Clark. Now let's see, Robin, from your mouth where your microphone is. Okay. Wait, you don't have gloves on. How, well, that, you yeah. don't have gloves on, I Robin. Know, I did know. you just wash your hands? Yes, I did. And I moisturized. All right, beautiful. Now we are not in the actual CDC guideline area. We are exactly four feet away yeah, it's, from microphone we're a to bit microphone. Short. That's but what she Robin said. and I have been, ex- you know, we've been exchanging bodily fluids anyway, so we don't have it. We know that. And and you're a little short, Tony. That's okay. Thank you. And now our special guest, ladies and gentlemen, in studio today. Let me put the meter on him, everybody. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Harry Mays is in the studio today. And let's check. He, wow, he's warming up. He's eighty nine point two. Harry, great to see you, brother. Hey, it's great to see you, too. And, wait, wait, let me and, check. Let me Robin. check. How Ro- far are we apart? Let me check now, Harry. We are four feet apart. See? See? Now, it's an optical illusion. It looks like Robin and I are, like, miles apart, and we are the exact same distance apart. So while we're not legally within six feet, we're still safe. There's no splatter. But Robin and I are six feet yes. apart. Yeah, no, you're That's definitely yeah. six yeah. feet apart. Harry, yes. Harry and I are exactly six feet apart. So, so this is perfect. a safe broadcast. So I want everybody to know that we're not... We're not pushing the envelopes here. We're not putting anybody in danger. It's just the three of us and our cats sleeping. And so we want to welcome you. And, Harry, we have the big announcement now. We've been teasing it on Twitter. We've been talking about it behind the scenes for months. Some people got a little inkling of this, and it's now official. Wait, wait, wait. Before you make the announcement. What? We need to let everybody know to share the damn show right now so that more people can see the announcement. Share, 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 because and and uh, send us whatever you want in bits because you're so excited. Is this an is- isosceles triangle then? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, with like two sides the same? Is that what no, you're saying? Equal, no, isosceles. No, isosceles is all One three. side, yeah. yes. Are the One same. side is uh, different. I, it's an, I, I, I don't know. I can't. Uh, See, you and I, 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 are, I, you and I are exact distances, but when you make the complete triangle, that, that one long isosceles. Equilateral. Thank you, Burton Gass. Is that what it is? Equilateral. Yeah, equilateral. Yeah. So, what? Tony, everybody's sharing the show right now. The big announcement. No, which... Harry and I are not becoming the Democratic nominees since they really don't want Joe Biden out there and they keep propping him up. We are not running for president. No, they want Cuomo now, don't they? I don't know who they want. I don't really care who they want. <laughs> it's what the people want when it comes to broadcasting excellence, Harry. Harry and I, my old great partner for many, many years at 97.5. Harry and I have done national shows together on Yahoo Sports Radio. Yeah, right. Traveling in Houston and other places. 
Remember that? Yes, I do. But I, I'm a little scared. I got to be honest with Why? you. Why? And it has nothing to do with virus. Let me check my temperature. I'll make sure I'm all right. Here. You're over there talking about nether regions, and you've got rubber gloves on, and you're about four <laughs> feet away from me. So I, I got want... the stethoscope. Yeah, and you have a stethoscope. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what what goes on here? I haven't well, been here you know, in a while. we do like to play doctor every now and then. It's I know national... people are bored, Tony. It's national... I had it. It's National Doctor's Day today. <laughs> the one thing that we do know that will not happen, which will be happening elsewhere in the world, there you know that nine months from now there's going to be a huge baby boom. Well, and a lot of divorces yes. too. Oh, exactly. But it's not yes. that will that will not happen here. Yeah. No baby boom. Three months to divorce, nine months till kids. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the big announcement. You probably may have guessed by now. Maybe you didn't. A couple of people no. posted it. I don't know where they people learned People think it. you're running for office. I'm not running for office. I'm not. Uh, I am self-quarantining. I'm like everybody else. Everybody's the same in this thing. That's, that's, the, that's what makes us all one. Mm. Everybody's going through the same thing. People don't you know, My mom's 95 and a half. She's about to be 96 in July. I'm over the age. And now we're seeing that it's not just people over 60. You know, we're seeing people die of this virus. And we don't know the reasons. We, you know, we see younger people. There was an, uh, an infant that died. Yeah, so we'll let the scientists thing. and doctors determine all of that. And we hope that people stay safe. And now we're going to have to stay in for another month and things of that nature. So you do it. You do it or you risk hurting yourself or hurting somebody else. It's that simple. Yeah, I think we take the sacrifice now so we can have a summer and get sports back at some point in the fall or exactly. whenever. Because, you know, you got to pay for it now. Okay. It's been released, Tony. It's Go ahead. Official. Robin it's Holton's a- had me tease this. Now, I didn't want to do what a lot of radio stations do. They're going to have a big announcement, and then they keep having you go through commercial right. break. But it's going out that- on social media right now by okay. the entity that is not us, so Next say it. Monday. Next Monday is what date, Harry Mace? Uh, April the 6th. April the 6th. We will already be six days into the next 30-day quarantine, which is the entire month of April. That should be the day of the national championship in college basketball. But you're not going to get that. No. They'll show reruns. You're going to get fresh new programming, and it's going to be on Sirius XM, Channel 211, the Dan Patrick Channel, Harry Mays, and yours truly, Tony Bruno, back together again in afternoon drive on the East Coast. 3 to 6 p.m., we will be on next Monday, Sirius XM 211, the Dan Patrick Channel, and still on Twitch.tv, Tony Bruno Show. So you'll be able to see it on Twitch and hear it, and you'll be able to hear it on Sirius XM and on the Sirius XM app. And no, this show will not be over. Um, we are just moving it to 3 to 6 p.m., so it's going to be simulcast. Exactly. So anybody that loves to be able to interact, you will still be able to. It's gonna The, the formatting will change a little bit. Obviously, being on Sirius XM, there are a lot of things that Harry and Tony will need to do um, on the air, but especially during the commercial breaks, that is going to be uh, full interaction with the Twitch audience. We'll still be able to bring in the Twitch comments every now and then on the regular show. Is, I mean, on the main show, the main series portion. But um, it is going to be simulcast. It's the first ever show on Sirius XM that will be able to have the Twitch portion brought into it. So we're very, very excited. And it's going to be the, you see the new logo up there. Where's the logo? Oh, there it is. The Tony Bruno Show with Harry Mays. Is that superimposed? I like that. No, that's that's it. That's the legit, legit. Yeah, that's that not, we didn't, you know, when Harry and I took that picture at the Super Bowl yeah, in Miami. Yeah, row, right. Yeah. At the Sirius yeah. XM set. And so it's, let's take a picture. If this thing happens, then we can post it. I had my crumb bum shirt on, so yeah, I was right. well dressed for the occasion. You were. <laughs> the crumb bum shirts must be worn all over the nation. In honor of the former great mayor and police commissioner, Frank Now, Rizzo. Tony, what channel will this be on? 211. 211. And what happens? 211. What is 211? It's the Dan Patrick channel. How yes. cool is that? It is great. Because, you know, Dan and I go back. When I, when I started with ESPN Radio in 1992, Keith Olbermann and Dan Patrick were just starting up. The, the big show. The big show. Yeah. Keith and I knew each other, worked together for decades from the 80s. And so Keith moved back from Los Angeles where he was doing the local CBS Sports on local TV out there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's where Keith he was. was. Yeah, he was okay. out in Los Angeles, the sports n- number one sports guy in Los Angeles on the CBS television local affiliate. I don't know what the station is. It's not CBS three. That's here in Philly. But anyway, he was on CBS, and then ESPN called Keith and said, "Hey, why don't you come back, do some radio?" Because Keith knew that I had been hired, and Keith and I were friends. So he said, "Hey, I could do some radio on the weekends, and then do Sports Center with Dan Patrick." 
on the weeks, the weekdays. And that was must-see TV. Oh, absolutely. It really I mean, was. That was when ESPN, I mean, it was. Because, remember, go back to 1992. You know, there was very little, on, nobody had internet access. I mean, mm-hmm. you had some stuff. There was no, there was no internet, period. No, that was until like 95, 96, if Exactly. I there was no ESPN News. There was no right. ESPN2. There was no ESPN Ocho. It was just ESPN Radio. Right. And ESPN TV first, ESPN Radio. So all the TV guys, Dan and Keith, and Keith was a regular on Saturday nights in the beginning and then devoted full time to television because that's when they started ESPN too. So anyway, to die, not to keep going on and on and on. So Dan and I go way, way back. Every time we see Dan at a national event and the Danettes, great guys, hang out with them. So there's a love connection here. And Dan had to approve my being added to the channel because the channel has his name on it. Right. And so, you know, Sirius has a lot of great sports content. You know, Mad Dog Radio sure. with Chris Russo. You look around, NFL. I mean, anything you want. Fantasy, Sirius XM pretty much has everything you need. And I've been a subscriber forever. And I even pay for my subscription. Me too. I even pay for my son's subscription. Yeah. That's how much I love Sirius. I pay for porn and I pay for Sirius XM. Well, you got to make Good a couple choices you know? there. What would be the third choice now? If you only had three things that you could pay for, porn... Sirius XM, and what else? Tito's. And Tito's yeah. Vodka. Now you can use it as hand sanitizer, exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> I need stock in Tito's right now. Well, we you know, you public. saw that they're, I mean, they, they came out with a joke, don't use yeah. it. But now they're actually making, because all of these distilleries that have alcohol production already built into their program, yeah. they, they are now making hand sanitizer. So there is a true, honest-to-God Tito's hand sanitizer right. now. Well, you can't get Tito's vodka in Pennsylvania right now. <laughs> in fact, I'm really? making a run to Maryland. Do you want to go with they're, me? They're, they're sold out? Well, no, that's, liquor stores are shut down. But Maryland stores are still yeah, open? Yeah, they're still open. Oh. Well, my son lives in Maryland. Yeah. I got a but I can't even there. go down and see my grandson. That's, you know, everybody's dealing with their own things. I'm, I'm, I'm not any special, but... Or, you know, our grandson, my, my oldest son, AJ, and his wife, Sarah. You can't visit him, right? No. Yeah. And so we, in January, my little uh, first grandchild, Dominic Vincent Bruno. How about that? Might be Italian. Yeah, a little bit. Born prematurely. So he was born on January 13th, 2 pounds, 13 ounces. Very premature. But he was 29 weeks along. So they put him in the ICU in an incubator. And so the day after he was born, Robin and I drove down to Maryland, uh, in actually Annapolis, where the hospital is, yeah. where the great, you know, Pat Sajak and his wife, their name is on one of the buildings there in that great, uh, di- that great medical complex. Oh, so they must have I donated think, a bunch of money. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Think Pat Shay- Sajak's every single family member has its own building. His oh, mother, really? he named one after. Well, that's where he's <laughs> from. You know, he's from Virginia. That's why he's a big Washington Capitals fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a D.C. area guy. He goes out to California and films The Wheel of Fortune, but right. he's from that area. And so he's, do- he's donated a lot of money to this great medical, the Anne Arundel. Are you familiar with Anne Arundel? Anne that's Arundel. Anne Arundel, Anne Arundel, that's Arundel, right. I, I call her Arundel. It's Anne yeah. Arundel. That's great. No, Anne Arundel was on the side stage at... Uh... Isn't he on the Eagles postgame live with the... Uh... <laughs> that's Rendell. <laughs> Anne Aaron, and Dale, Rendell. Anyway, but there's only one thing we can do now, Robin, now that the announcement is official and the world knows. Tony Bruno and Harry Mays back together again. Let's go to the Furco String Band. Hopefully they're not wearing blackface. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Let us sing the song. Where's the Philly mayor? Happy days are here again. All together. I gotta learn to play the banjo. So let's tell the world No, Luigi's not fired. Jesus. You think we would run him out of here? Actually, for those of you wondering about uh, Luigi, he started a new job. He has a new job, and he has a new job, a new girlfriend, a new dog. He's like a new man. Mm. That <laughs> so is he, the instrument I think of when I think of you, though, Tony, a banjo. Like, Why? Really? I don't know. I, I, I thought you would have been a mummer. I would have been, but I, didn't, I really didn't drink enough alcohol as a youth to great. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. The Irish and the Polish guys on Second Street didn't really like me no, down no, there. No, I, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I used to do. I, actually, I would I would go out there with the guys who wore blackface back in the day when nobody was going crazy. Oh. Not we didn't wear blackface because we were pretending to be black. We were wearing blackface because we were stupid. Yeah, oh. and that was makeup. And I read. I really never did wear blackface. By the way, ever, ever, ever. Thank you. Ever. The banjo. 
Okay. No, I'm a drum guy. I, no, that's right. I have an admission to make. I What's have that? because yes, Robin's from Robin's family's right. from from Holland, and they have, and they wear blackface for the great disinterclass thing. It's not what what in the U.S. you think of as blackface. It is a Swarta Pete. It's it's so well whatever. Oh God. It's Mummer. But I don't have any, But I don't have any photographs of me in it. And I uh, anyway. It's an admission. I'm I just in case it comes out ever. Oh, I'm yeah. admitting it before it comes out. Great, beautiful. Getting ahead of the story. There yes. are no. You will never find a picture of me in blackface ever. Not in my yearbooks. I was never the governor of Virginia. I never, ever, 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 ever. The only makeup I wore was Mac, the Deep Mac, so I could look like Orange Man Bad when I was on TV. Well, yeah, I had to get makeup. Uh, when I started to go do some TV hits, yeah, remember you that's how the that. whole Lima thing got started. Exactly, the live-in the makeup, live-in makeup artist. artist. Not Lima, first... Peru, or Lima in Delaware Lima, County. Lima, that's over near uh, Media, right? Yes. Yeah. And Robin didn't understand that. When we moved here, and she hadn't been to the area, except for a couple times, we would drive up in Delaware County and would say L-I-M-A, and right. she'd say, oh, Lima. I said, no, no that's Lima. Lima. Right, like Lima Bean. Right, but Which... in Lima, in Peru, L-I-M-A is Lima. Now, isn't there a Lima or Lima, Ohio, too? I think there is. Is, is it Lima? I think it is. Okay. But yeah. enough about geography. Let's get it back. Not to the Eagles. Yes, people are wondering what we'll be talking about on the national show. That's a good question. It's going to be a national show. Of course we're going to talk Philly because we're in Philly. It's like New York guys who do national shows talk about New York. But we're, it's not going to be a Philly-centric show. You can hear that anywhere. We're going to bring you the same kind of fun stuff we do here. You know, and luckily I've been on Sirius XM yeah. in various incarnations, whether it was Fox Sports Radio or Sporting News or Yahoo!, you know, truck drivers all over the country remember me from doing the night show, and they would be able to check in because that's the one great thing about satellite radio is you turn a channel on or any of your favorite channels, and when you're driving through the mountains... You don't lose it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, especially truck drivers who are at the backbone of this country. Now more than ever, we're seeing how important these yeah. people are. They're taken mm-hmm. for granted every single day. Yet now we know that these people are out there because we see that they're... They're the ones bringing the toilet paper and the foodstuffs. And They're... taking risks. Exactly. I mean, I mean seriously. Exactly. You know, I know everybody, you know, and we, you know, we talk about all the people working in the hospitals and the first responders and fire, firemen, police officers, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. But don't forget about those truck drivers and Absolutely. delivery people, man. And the and way all I, the people you know, working in restaurants doing curbside, like the takeout, yes. where you roll up. And and somebody's got to make that stuff. And, and now that everybody's having stuff shipped to their homes. Yeah. Um, those uh, the, the, the food deliveries yeah. and Amazon people that are working in the warehouses. They're hiring. And they're Amazon. hiring. And So is Acme. You know, they need, they need right? people to stock shelves. Yeah. So a lot of the supermarkets that are still open, essential services, they're open and they're out there. So just remember those people. And the truck drivers, and I mentioned it because when we were on Sirius at night especially, truck drivers would be listening. You know, they would drive, they would drive through two states while we were on the air, right. and be able to keep listening to the show. So we'd give them shout-outs. Our buddy Steve Zabin did the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, what are you hauling? What you hauling or what something? What you hauling. I would say, now, you know, pull the horn. <laughs> the fabulous sports babe used to give love to the, to right. the truckers, too. Pull the horn. We wanted to see how big the horn is. Right. Speaking you got of a truckers, big one in there? That's where that came from. You got a big one in there? Now, we don't encourage this. Captain Russell Haas on uh, the Twitch stream says, I crashed my truck once while listening to Maze and Bruno. Bruno, the only accident I've ever had. Now, I'm assuming that's because you were laughing so hard. Wow. Um, um, I, I don't even want to think of what else you might have been doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, right. I don't, we, we can't take credit for that, though. You know? I know, I mean, but I, we but don't want that. This is something that we have heard over and over again, that the two of you were appointment radio. People would be really upset if they missed even five minutes because they would hear from somebody else what they had missed, and they're like, oh, man, because you guys don't do the same thing every five minutes. You don't, you don't rehash uh, <clears throat> the big stories every 15. You have to listen to the entire show. Well, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to miss and a lot. And that's the thing about, listen, I love local radio. I mean, I've done most of my career here in Philly, you know, but I've done national stuff, and I've done worked in L.A., and I've worked in Birmingham, Alabama for a couple of years mm-hmm. back in the 70s. So when you're doing a local-only show, you focus on local. That's what they do on local stations. That's when what you're people doing, want. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, we can talk. If it's the biggest story in the, in, in the country, in Philly, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about all teams, all sports, except Belarus soccer, which is the only thing you can bet on right well, now. Well, right. It, 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 you see, there was, <laughs> there's a story about uh, the Belarus president. Did you see this, Tony? It's amazing you brought that up. 
because he believes that vodka and saunas will cure the coronavirus. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Tony's more of a hot tub guy, but yeah, so does all right. But you know, I don't have any room down here, Harry. You can see the wine cellar is getting a little more crowded here with with uh, uh, construction. And exactly. by the way, I don't want the I don't want the inflatable rat coming in front of my house. Robin and I did our own construction, did not get a permit, but everything's closed, so we couldn't. Oh, okay. Yes, and so now we can finally reveal what that structure over there is for. Um, the structure that you Can we show see, a wide yeah, shot of it? Robin and I were here till 1 in the morning, Harry, while you were sleeping I in was a sleeping. Tito's-induced coma. Right. But you were the, the, the good part about having Tito's and then going to bed, and I'm not uh, encouraging drinking to people who don't drink, but if you enjoy a cocktail and people are, that's why the liquor stores are open in most places. Yeah, not in PA. Not in Pennsylvania. They're bo- they have boarded up windows on some of the liquor stores that's here. Well, they know they'd get looted. Exactly. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It looks like the the end of times in in South Philly at some of the liquor stores. Now that so behind Harry, you can see a little bit of a structure right over there, um, and it's not completed yet. But now that the is... front part, the cabinet we're using, Harry. See how we're utilizing existing space? Yes. So we got a wine cabinet. We're using that as the top of the desktop, and then are going to the wall, making another shelf there, and that's where our brand new seven million dollar audio console will be. <laughs> that's a nice wine. Uh cabinet there yeah that, yeah that's that's you know that's a pretty cheap but it's not that's not no but not, i'm saying about the product inside oh there's good yes. product yeah, yeah, yeah there's good right. products we ain't going for any cheap shit here we're no. in the, we're in the pandemic yeah we're, we're this is a pandemic we're bro. saving money on the uh the the structure but right. we're not going cheap on the wine so rob and i went to home depot we risked ourselves we went there and got some wood outside cutting yesterday measuring Measuring twice, cutting once. Remember that, Harry? Yes. Measure measured, once, measure twice. Measure twice, cut once. Or once bitten, twice shy, babe. Was Same that thing. White Lion? No, that, that was, uh, that was. oh, damn it. We played it a couple great weeks white. ago. Great White. Great Thank White. Thank you. Yes. That's great, yeah. great white knowledge. Harry Mays, ladies and gentlemen. That's the kind of stuff we'll do here because we've always been doing it and we're going to keep doing it. So so anyway, there's that, that's the platform that the board's going to be on and then there's going to be a slide out both underneath it and above it. The above one is going to be for the computer so mm-hmm. that uh, whoever's there. I mean, this is limited space down here. This is this is our semi permanent like it's a permanently temporary studio. So we need to still make it look nice. We are going to be getting another studio. Kind of like everything these days. Yeah. Permanently exactly. temporary. Right. And well, we, were, we, we were doing this stuff in our – everybody on TV now, every radio show, yeah. everybody's doing it from home. Right. And like all the engineers at Sirius, got to give them credit, too. You talk about all the TV and radio engineers. Oh, they must have been working their oh tails off. They still are 24-7 yeah. because, remember, every show at Sirius and normally done in their studios in New York, right. they couldn't do it up there. And you and I, we were up there right. last year, and there's a 1,000 studios. Yes. And so I'm sure Howard, I don't even know if Howard Stern's doing it from home or if he's in his studio, because he's got his own studio and it's... Right, and it's yeah, pretty Yeah, we couldn't sterile. even get in there. Yeah, no, no they well, haven't I got in there up. once. But, yeah, I got the private tour but once. But all of their the engineers, day. imagine this, when, when New York went on lockdown, 90% of their shows are in New York. Mm-hmm. I think it's about 90%. And, and a lot of them are in D.C. too. They have studios right, in D.C. in D.C., that's right. But they had to go on lockdown, so suddenly all of these shows could not go in every single day, and their engineers had to figure out how to get everybody doing their shows from home. So there's these machines called audio codecs that allow you to tie into another studio somewhere, which we will have here. And um, most of the people that were at home didn't know how to work them, so they Mm -hmm. had to explain. I mean, the engineers... They were pulling their hair out. Because we had, we were getting they probably to the all point. look like Tony now. That's why they had to delay the announcement. Obviously, the announcement of the show doesn't supersede all the other things that they have to continue their broadcast. Right. I mean, everybody's doing shows from studios, and so while we were waiting for the studio people to get all their other shows that are already on the air going, we couldn't do any audio tests back to New York from here. So that's why we ordered another line. We had Comcast, so we now we have a FiOS and a Comcast line coming in here. So there will be no trouble with backups or anything else. And the other good thing is we'll be able to continue to go on remotes because the equipment that we already have will be able to be taken. So if we go to a casino or go right. somewhere and do a remote show, which we'll be able to do from all over the country, actually. Mm-hmm. Kentucky like a, Derby. The Kentucky Derby, the Super Bowl. We'll still be able to travel and we'll have equipment to take with us, which is not the big studio equipment, which will remain here. So those are the good things that we're trying to do to make this happen. You know, I said it a couple years ago when I left radio, terrestrial radio. I wasn't looking for other jobs. You know, I'd pretty much run my course. You know, I was still doing some stuff with Harry doing during the football season on 97.3 ESPN in South Jersey. 
because I love football. And they said, hey, would you do a couple of pregame shows? And I did that. So I was dabbling. We're doing the Twitch show now for just over a year. And so this isn't really a full-time job, even though we dedicate as much time to preparing for these shows every day as I did when I was doing a regular radio show. You know, we do two hours. I prepare just as hard as I did, maybe even harder, because we're adding audio and video components, which we really didn't have to do when we were just doing radio. Right, right. You know, now we're looking for great videos and songs and things of that nature to enhance your entertainment value. You know what I'm saying? It's all about enhancement. It really is. Except you can't get those right now. Is that considered no, elective surgery? I, that's elective. That's yeah. In fact, I, I just got a, a note from my dentist the other day uh, in periodontist saying that if you had an emergency, in other words, if you got your tooth knocked out, like say, I did, you mean like that's Tony? what I'm saying. You could go in and he he could pre- perform a, a procedure on you now. No, my doc, elective. my dentist, when this this fell out two Sundays ago, mm-hmm. right? Which is why we didn't do shows last week because I have a, I have a, a a plate, a partial, a partial. I have a partial every morning when I wake up, but that's what happens even when you get older. Right. You know what happens? Once you don't have that partial anymore, you know it's getting near the end. Well, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or you can buy There's a pill for that. I, I know thought. there is. Roman. Yeah. We, we do, we're, they're one of our sponsors. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I like the dad with the hair with the long. That's oh, what I want to look the, like. He's got that ponytail. Right. You ever see the Roman commercials, the dad and the son? He looks like Xander Shoffley's dad. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he looks like. He looks just like him. You're absolutely. That's great golf knowledge right exactly. there. Harry is still going into the old golf bag. Oh, I've played more golf in the month of March than I have in the so summer. So you were time. allowed on the golf courses, well, right? Not oh, technically, no. Yeah. Oh, so you were sneaking on when no well, one was I mean, watching? It's closed. But you're, it's your club that you're but a I, member you know, of. I, I pay dues. I'm a member there. You so weren't I like going walk. down to Pine Hill and sneaking no. on. The, you didn't go to Marion and try to sneak on. No, did you? no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> My God. They don't even let me, my car go down Ardmore Avenue to go past Marion. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. So anyway, that's the, the good news. And we're having, that's great, no doubt. Great Xander Shoffley knowledge, mm. Harry. That is great. So anyway, so talking about not getting things done. So I knocked my, so I, had a, I have a partial because I need some implants. Mm-hmm. And I had a couple of teeth that, Broke because back in the day when every when the dentist all did, you got to do a root canal there. Right. You know this way the root gets you. We go down there and we till the root and then we put this thing on top of it and nobody sees it. Little did they know thirty years ago when they did root canals that that teeth that tooth that no longer has a root it's and it's dead. Just, it's, it's basically dead. dead. It's yeah. dead. And sooner or later one day it's going to crack. Right. And then what do they have to do? They have to extract it. And they extracted several of my molars on top. In two pieces. It doesn't hurt anymore mm-hmm. when they do the extraction. Well, there's no nerve in there. Exactly. Yeah. And so they pull the teeth out, and they say, we're going to have to do an implant. But you're going to have to wait mm-hmm. until that heals, that hole. We've got to make sure that hole heals. And so you wait, and you wait, and then you had to get an $800 partial denture until the, the, the side cavities or the side holes healed. And now all of a sudden, the front tooth snaps off, which the, cab, which the denture... It, it held the other thing in. Yeah, there, it right? held it in. So now I'm missing... Basically, the entire side, but it's not, you don't notice it that much, right? Am I well, listening? I mean, you look like Ovechkin. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not even Bobby Clark, not even Coots or any of those guys look like this. Now, did they put their, you know, they don't get their teeth done until their career's over. They get all their. No, Clarky you know, had him when he was playing. He did? Oh, yeah. He took the plate out after the game. Well, plate, though, but I'm saying they won't get implants like real. No, know, until the, yeah, you're right. Fast no, no, you don't, no, you don't over. get implants. Yeah. You just put the you just put the the what do you call it the apparatus the appliance is that what it is appliance the don't they call them appliances Robin uh, appliances I guess yeah, I don't that's know. bad dental huh. knowledge so anyway my dentist I call the office and say hey I need to fix this you know it sounds bad I mean you, you you'll notice I sound a little Mike Tysonist Tysonist yeah not bad though no not as bad as I initially the first couple of days without it yeah I was afraid to talk I said we can't do shows not only do I look horrible but I didn't sound good oh you know it's all about yeah. the sound here. sure yeah. It is the medium of radio. Right? Exactly, I mean, and TV. You know, you know we but, love you know, Twitch we, and everything, but it really is about Kinnean. that sound. Speaking of Pat Kaneen, just subscribe. Thank you so much, Pat. Pat is instrumental. He has been helping us get all of our testing done yep. because... And he came in the house, and I put the, I put the gun on him every day. Yeah. I made sure he was safe. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I asked if somebody rings the front doorbell, I do the code word, is it safe? Now, is that what they use at the airports? N- no, like not this like- one. This one is really a home one. To tell you, you know, I'm sure they, they use one a little bit better. Yeah, because I saw some like B-roll video on all. No, the they news have similar they're, ones. They're yeah. zapping people. They on have the ones that will the, the de- more they'll check your actual temperature. Yeah, this one gives you like ballpark. Okay, like I know. Let me do another one right here, Terry. 
Now you're like 89. You're 90.1. It's a little low. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably not exactly accurate. See, I think these are not accurate. The ones they well. use in airports where they're really doing, they're much more sensitive. Mm. This is like a $20 item in the Home Depot. Well, they probably have the ones that you can get for children to take their temperature. This is for home use to see if you have this any. This is for a uh, quickie. Yeah. No, that's that's for home use to see if you have any air coming that's in from your outside. That's what I just said, Robin. This is what this is what. But people it's not really use. made for your temperature, temperature. Like if you're ghost hunting and you feel a cold area right near you, you hit it like that, and it'll tell you what the temp the ambient temperature is. Like for example, I'll, the window right there. So what that indicates a spirit is in the house. That's what the ghost hunters yeah. say. That's why I bought it. Really. Who was that hot chick ghost hunter that you knew? Chris Williams. We still talk to her yeah. on Twitter. The great yeah. Chris Williams. Does she Does still do the show? Like, no, 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 no. She moved. She she moved to Australia and she's now back in the United States. She's out in uh, Arizona, Arizona, baby. Oh. No, we 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 constantly we're in constant communication with our friends. We don't forget our friends from the past, Harry. Right. Chris Williams is the, one of the greats of all time. She came down and did shows with us. I know. Remember when we did a show at the... Uh, did you go to Eastern State Penitentiary? No, it was yeah, the I went, other yeah, place. No, no, I went to Eastern State Penitentiary with her. We did an overnight investigation But then with there her. was the other place out near Royer's. Pen, Pen, that was Pen, Penhurst. Penhurst. Oh, but yeah, she, was wasn't, she wasn't That's at Pernhurst. That's scary out there. That was, that yeah. was yeah. intense. We spent a night in Penhurst, too. Robin and I are expert ghost hunters. We've had, we were, in, we were in television shows hmm. with little, our ghost hunting I'm skills. I'm a little bit sensitive. Yeah? Yeah, I am. So you I, can feel the presence A little bit. I feel it when something's crawling up my leg and has a nice, like a little cold spot. I get that tingling sensation inside you know, my inner thighs. You know what I get? My loins start girding. Yes. <laughs> I'm 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 a emote. So I I I a what? feel I feel emotions. Like emo Phillips? Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> Is he still I, alive? Uh, I don't know what the and technically that's called, but I'll feel emotions. Is there still emo music? Remember oh, the sure emo yeah. bands? Absolutely. Late 90s. Emo chicks are the worst though. Oh man. yeah. You don't want to yeah. be bothered. I, I don't with that. like I don't like too much emotion. They're like goth chicks. Yeah. Some of them are hot. Goth chicks are pretty hot, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. Not all of them, Harry. So people are asking, <laughs> Tony, that, again, this is the new show starting next Monday. Next Monday, it's 3 to 6. 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to be you and Harry. Um, I will be an executive producer, and I will be um, – I won't be quite as active as I am now, uh, but I will be manning the chat room. I will be doing the videos, booking guests. Uh, if we have a lot of phone calls, I might help screen calls. But we will have a board op um, that will be running all the sound. So and we're going to we take actually, calls. We're yes. yes. Phone calls? Oh, absolutely. And we yeah. actually have an intern. Oh, wow. Yes, we do. Well, he's going to be our social. Illegal. Guess well, who no. this intern is? This it's is not really our intern. He's our social media advisor. So he well, will handle the social media. Okay. He was a he was a 13 year old kid who used to call our night show when Robin and I were in L. A. doing Into the Night with yeah. Tim Cates and the gang out there. And he called up as a 13 year old. His name is Caleb, and he lives in Indiana, Indianapolis area. Mm -hmm. And he would call in, and he would be afraid because most talk show hosts do not put 13 year olds on the air. Well, yeah. But this kid was so sharp. That's he frowned knew upon. Stuff. Most it's frowned upon. But I was like, hey, you know what? I don't play those bullshit rules, rules on my show. If you're a young kid, you're 13. A lot of 13-year-old yeah. kids are sharp. And it's well, his yeah, dad. sharper it's than the hosts. Exactly. Ca Caleb, Caleb Andrews, it's his dad who originally was listening to Tony and had been listening to Tony for years and years and yeah. got him hooked on it when he was like 12, 13 years old. That's good parenting. I yes, know, it is. right? And um, If everybody it, did that to their children, we wouldn't have any of these idiots out there licking toilet seats and uh, licking... Uh, uh, Vodka shots out of chicks' or chicks spitting asses. on oranges it's in, spitting in on oranges. Stores. How about that guy? That's uh, he got a beat down. No, we're gonna play that. It's the, so, it's the greatest six second clip oh, ever, it's ever. Awesome. Plus, we have it a couple awesome. of coronavirus songs you have to hear. Mm. Uh, people have heard them. We will play the unedited version. Mm. You know, because on regular radio you can't do that. But this, we have two great songs today. Yes, Harry. we do. We actually have three great songs today, because you know coronavirus. As we get back to that for a moment. How can you stay away from it? No, you can't. You know how you stay away from it, though, seriously. You get the information you need every day, but if you leave the TV on all day, it's going to depress you. I'm tell you're, you're exactly right. And people I are literally getting depressed. Get depressed. I do. I don't, yeah. watch, I don't watch news channels. I, I watch the thing in the afternoon at 5 o'clock just to get the information. Mm -hmm. I don't go crazy because Trump says something stupid. I want to hear the doctors and the scientists. Right. Fauci. And that's where I'm going to hear them. I'm not going to hear them listening to any, uh, anybody who's not in charge telling me what they would do. I don't care what people who are in charge, what they would do. It's like asking me what I would do. Right. I don't have any power, and oh, by the way, neither do these other people. They're sitting at home just like you and I are. And so if you want information, you get it from one place. 
the task force, right? Was it uh, Dr. Fauci? And yeah, the, Dr. Burks. Dr. Burks. Burks. Yeah. yeah. You know, that those are the people yeah. who are making the decisions. What else are you going to do? So what we do is instead of watching that crap, I started watching one of the greatest shows ever, Harry. Tiger King. Oh. Tiger. Tiger King. Tiger, Tiger King. King. I fi- we finally watched it. We, 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 when we binged, we did two episodes right. Friday night, two and a half episodes on Saturday night. Uh-huh. So now we're halfway through. There's seven ep- episodes, yeah. right? So we're halfway right. through episode five. And then last night, after we finished our little work down here, I said, let's just finish this thing. Because I can't watch seven straight hours. I can't no, binge I can't watch either. like people to do. I, I, God bless the people that can. Yeah, My mom God, does exactly. that. I can't do it. You can do whatever you want. I just can't do anything more than two hours. Right. And that's anything, Harry. Yeah. Whether it's sex, I whether it's a watch a movie. Whether it's uh, go out to the store, two hours is it. That's why I can't watch The Godfather. That's why I couldn't watch that other stupid mob movie. Oh, uh, the, uh, the one that just, The Irishman. Yeah, I can't watch yeah, it. That was like three hours and 40 I, well, minutes I'm not or watching something. anything for three hours. Yeah. They could be in my house filming that movie, and I would leave because hmm. I, I would lose my attention span. Now, Harry, you've watched two episodes? Two episodes, and it was last night. Last night. Yeah. Okay, so we can't really talk no. too much about it because otherwise we're going to But gonna I think if you've people. watched two episodes of this, you already know. That pretty much everybody on this show oh. is an asshole. Oh. <laughs> you should take, by the way, you should take those things off, Tony. Why? It's going to chafe your your fingers. No, it's not. It feels good. I like that. Yeah, but you won't know they're chafed until you take yeah. them off. I got powder in there. Oh, yeah, you do? Baby powder. A little baby <laughs> powder. Just stay away from me. Low, so you got to moisturize. Yeah. No, but I watched two episodes last night. I don't like jumping on the trendy things. Me typically. neither. You know, because everybody yeah. says you yeah. got to watch this. That's usually where I'll go. I'll wait. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're exactly wa- right. Or I won't yeah. watch it at I all. I did the same thing with Game of Thrones. Yeah. Robin same with was me. watching it, and I'm saying, I don't want to watch it. I hear all the banging and screaming and, and, and sword fights. If I want to see sword fights, I'll go to Pornhub <laughs> and go on the male content. Now, you now, did you know do saying? breaking. <laughs> I need to. I think I need to sit somewhere else. <laughs> we did do the Breaking Bad uh, jump on the bandwagon after three seasons, though. Right. Yeah, you weren't there from the start, no, though. No, we were and not there. Was from I. The, yeah. yeah. And I had to because everybody was saying I look like Heisenberg. Right, right. And so after three seasons, I said, well, maybe I should watch this since everybody says I look like him. Yeah. And so we binge watched. But we didn't watch like 50 episodes in a row. No. We wow. would watch like three at a time. Yeah. That's it. Three is max. I tell you, you watch all seven episodes of this show in a row, you're going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. These people are nuts. They are. Oh, and it gets worse. Yeah. And all I'm going to say. Breaking news. I'm not going to talk. Breaking news. It gets worse after episode two. (laughs) It does. (laughs) But you know what? The only thing that I will say is by the time the end of the show, I'm not satisfied. You're not. You no, wanted more? I, I No, no. Not I'm that I wanted more. I'm exhausted already after two. It's not that I wanted more, but I wanted a different outcome. And yeah. I'm not happy. Oh. I'm not happy with the outcome. That's Nobody's all I'm going to say. happy with the outcome. That is all I will say. Hmm. Well, I have mixed feelings about this show. First of all, I don't like anybody on the show. I don't no. like... There's a couple of people who are okay. But when you think of it, even the woman with the rescue... She's a fraud. A couple oh. of the girls in the harem in Murray. Oh, yeah. Beach no, no, that yeah. guy had a right. like them. If I, I was going to do that. I'm him. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's a half of, ty- of a big cat. Exactly. And he's the in other, Myrtle Beach. The other dude. It's like golf. The other dude the is a, gets toothless meth addicts to help <laughs> right. us with his animals. Yeah, well, the, a, guy, the other dude gets hot Oklahoma. chicks. Yeah. I know. Don Antle, the, the guy in, in Florida. The Doc Antle. Doc Antle. Excuse me. He has like a, he's like a schwami. No, he's in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. He's not in Florida. He's in okay. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Myrtle Beach. The chick's he, in Tampa. He's yeah. like in Swami. Sh- he has, no, I think. No, sh- Swami. 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 Yeah. Swami. Yeah. Swami. He has like five or six wives. He's at ESPN. And still, each of, he still each listens of, to the show, the great Howie Schwab. I love Howie Schwab. He, he has something like 40 acres or mm. maybe more. Yep. And then all of his wives have their own homes. Yeah, I know. He's got the life, man. I'll tell you. And Some, none of them are. Bad, they weren't bad looking No, and none of them are allowed to live with him. They all well, have... Yeah, that's what you'd want, right? Yeah, you got to have, I mean, have their separate He has, like, the perfect life as <laughs> right. far as Exactly. You don't want them all living in the same house. Right. Hey, here's your... Here's one for you and one for you and you. You're and then pretty... when it's the coronavirus comes out, you oh. just say, stay home. Exactly. And then you decide where to go. You know what I mean? I He's gotta... more of a Sven Gali, not a Schwami. That's, I think, the word. I think Sven that's what uh, she was... Not Sven Gulli, who plays the horror movies on Saturday nights on MeTV. You ever see that No, dude? I've never seen that. He was that. a DJ from Chicago. <laughs> And he's still on. And he's called Sven Gooley. I got to admit, these walk-up uh, noises, you throw, like them? they throw me off. 
Yeah, they, no, I'm like looking around. Like, does somebody come there's in? There's one that I don't think that they're playing it. They changed it, but there's one that's like a front door knocking. Yeah, I've heard when, that the last time oh, I was here. The first time that he implemented that one, it freaked us the yeah. f out. We all jumped because it moves. It starts like on one side of right. your headsets, and it moves over like the old quad. Remember when quad radio was on FM? Quad for a years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it lasted like two years, and people said, "What the hell is this shit?" Yeah. So anyway, back to where we are. Let's get it back. But I got to tell you, if I was going to raise big cats and charge people to come and pet, we had a bunch of, in fact, last night Robin was finding all the kitten videos that we mm-hmm. had when we had our first litter of Lily. And so we posted them, and, I, and Robin posted, forget, forget the Tiger King. Mm-hmm. How about the Kitten King? And Robin started posting videos of our little kittens climbing all over me, and then I had three of them in one hand at the same time. Because they were tiny. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to... I mean, we're going to show show some of these now, Robin. People may not. This, this is this was in our apartment at Dockside. Now these cats are all grown, right? But I figure, you know, it's pretty topical right now. And I figure if you hashtag Tiger King, so many people are watching this, they'll go and look at this. See, this mm. is good social media thinking, here. right? So the kittens, when they're kittens, when all animals are puppies or kittens, they're just absolutely look at adorable. Those little faces. But the ragdoll kittens that we had, we had 13 of them, Harry. Wow. Not all at the same time. No, we had seven at one time, the Magnificent Seven, the first uh, litter, and then six. And so I was basically the kitten king before that guy down there. I couldn't sing good country songs. I'll say one thing about that dude. Yeah. The guy's a good singer. He's okay. No, he's pretty good, man. He just, writes his own shit. Yeah. He produces his well, own we shit. we don't know that. Somebody said that he was lip syncing those songs. I don't Are know if he sure? was lip syncing the songs in the video itself. No, or yeah, if, the videos were lip yeah. syncs. Well, that's, that's the guy. That's the Tiger King that he sold some tigers to Shaq. I know. Shaq was in, like, uh, episode I one know. or two. Yeah. Oh, I missess that. How do we miss that? No, you saw it. It was like you were because you were on your stupid playing no. games on your co- computer and not paying attention. Oh, but that's because that it was on the list. He wasn't actually No, no. he was there physically was... there. Yeah, he because was Because remember, the one thing about the, the tiger kittens, mm-hmm. which everybody knows, you talk about chick magnets. Yeah, oh my that's god. That's what these people did. Everybody wanted to be, you know, it's like kittens. Yeah. If you have kittens in your house, come on up. Everybody and see my wants tiger, uh, Everybody wants to kitten. hold the kittens and pet the kittens. Same thing with tiger cubs. Right. They're absolutely adorable. And when they're babies like that, they're not going to bite you. They're not going to do anything. Yeah. And so everybody wanted weddings. You know, people were bringing them to weddings. And that chick down in Tampa, she's that's a fraud. fraud, by the way. She's doing the same thing yeah, the other people she do. Is. She's having weddings where, where people hold baby tiger kittens. Right. And her conditions are all shitty. Right. All the grass is grown. She doesn't even take care the of that place. Places and looking... then her cock husband, I'd like to, to kick that guy's ass. Hey. I'd like to do the same thing to her husband that that dude did to the guy that went into the fruit stand in the produce market. And the guy was spit on his oranges. This is what I'd like to do to the cuck guy who married the murderer. Alleged. A woman allegedly, and no doubt about it, married her, murdered her own husband. And he was a rich guy, right? Yeah, he was a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. She marries this, this guy who's a beta male. This is what I would do if I saw him down there at that big cat rescue place in Tampa, Florida, where I go a lot, Harry, and you have relatives down oh, there. Oh, sure. This is what I would do to him if I saw him anywhere near me. Again, this is not a really threat of violence. This is just implied threat of violence. Oh! Oh! Humanity! Boom! That's a great... That's one of the best left hands you'll ever see, I Harry. mean, that looked like Scott Stevens and Eric Lindros. Oh, man. Now, the guy didn't even land. It wasn't a knockout punch because he came flying with the left hand. Yeah. And he had an apron on. And did you see how huge those guys... The, the guy who hits him. Oh, How man. huge his hands are. Look yeah. at that. His hands must be like Are 10 inches long. Are we sure that's long. real? Of course it's real. Everything's made up now. No, that's not fake. Purposes. You don't think so? No, I don't think I so. I don't think that was fake. I think a lot of this stuff. This is isn't phone. like wrestling. He didn't like stomp his one foot when no, he was delivering right. the punch. <laughs> yeah. The guy was like, oh. Yeah. In fact, his back leg, the opposite leg of where his, his right leg came up. And so that, that actually gave him more power into the left. Because mm-hmm. I think he would have hit him. He would have probably knocked his ass out if he hit him with the right. And you were talking about Howard Baskin. That's the cuck guy. Yeah, exactly. married to this Carol Baskin. You know what she reminds me of, which is why I dislike her even more? Who? Hillary Clinton. Oh. She's like the Hillary Clinton of cat rescue. Everything goes back to politics. No, no. When I learned her more, more mannerisms, the way she talks, the way nothing's her fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody reminds you of something. You know, like the guy with the with you know a lot of those characters remind you of somebody, like the first mad dude with the tattoos who was missing teeth, 
Yeah. They broke well, up. Well, that yeah, that was the uh, husband. His, yeah, there were, he had two husbands. Married another husband. Gladney in North Carolina is saying that according to Slate, his songs are not his own. The mm. songs that are supposedly written and performed by Joe Exotic are, in fact, written and performed by Vince Johnson and Danny Clinton, a pair of musicians from Washington. Wow, wow. so I got to give him one of those. Have the yeah. first one of the show today. Okay. Exotic Joe. Wow. We knew. You were a fraud. Man. If he was lip syncing those songs, they were pretty damn good. <laughs> I got to get a couple of those outfits, though. I got to update no. my wardrobe. Because <laughs> well, you know, I'm an ordained one. minister uh, now, you know. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it, bring there, me up to speed with this. Right here. Let yeah. Let me show you right now. Okay. See that right there? Yeah, I see that. I'm going to put that, that on. Looks like that looks like something there. I could buy on South Street. Wait, wait. At, you like, know what was really funny, though? In the, did you see the episode of where he got married to his Spencer's two husbands? Spencer's Gifts. Is that where you got No, that? I got this from an actual ministry. Where Joe got married to his two husbands, <laughs> okay. and they're wearing the pink shirts. Yeah, you yeah, saw yeah, that? yeah, yeah. The, uh, the clergy woman. Yeah. That's the, um, the same tag, tag she had on. She had on. It's yeah. right. She got her uh, yes ministry from the same church. Is that I right? paid good thirty five dollars for this. <laughs> Plus, I got a parking credential. Is that a Scientology thing? No, 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 that? no. This is the Universal Life Church, Harry. Oh, okay. They're closed right now, so that's why they need walking ministers like me mm. to take care of the congregation. Tony can perform. Universal Life. That's like a policy. No, I, don't, I, I sold that. I sold that when I need money for my alimony. I sold my universal life policy. <laughs> and now my 401k is crashed. Oh, yeah. So I'm broke as AF. Tony can like perform weddings. Else. Yeah. He can perform Bar mitzvahs. Uh, baptisms. Exactly. And Sweet 16s. Funerals. Well, what, did, what type of testing did you have to go through? Extensive, Harry. It was yeah. extensive. It's extensive testing. It took like at least, oh my gosh, like. Five minutes on yeah, the internet. Really five minutes. <laughs> but no, I have a clergy parking. I have a minister bumper sticker. No, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to give you a ticket no. if you got a minister on there, right? That's better than a handicap yeah. one. I need one of those. Handicap or a minister? No, a minister. $34, Eric. <laughs> huh? That's you guys can be dueling ministers. Yeah. You could like perform. Yeah. <gasps> Who would not love to have both Tony and Harry? We do... can do a spiritual healings. You should have seen the guy that married me in my first. Uh, Go around, yeah. Which was in Vegas. Oh, you didn't go to the Elvis Chapel, did you? No, no. He, this guy looked like he was in the WWE. I he was swear ripped, to God, was he all ripped and tatted yeah. up. He and had stuff. one of those big like goatees, like with the rubber band in the middle. No, it I gotta get it that. It wasn't look, Lou man. Albano, but it was close. <laughs> and he didn't have any like paper clips sticking out of his cheeks. But he looked like a guy in the WWE, and he had like a oh, purple robe yeah. with yeah. black and white spots on it. Yeah. Like something the Tiger Lady would wear down exactly. in Tampa. I do have a. I was actually going to do. This is another funny story from the weekend. So I said we're going to do these Tiger. You know, the Tiger King is big. So I said let's do the Kitten King, <laughs> and I had that old leopard robe that I have. I remember that. And one. I have a cowboy hat. Hmm. So I was going to go late. I was going to get up in that outfit, and then have Robin superimpose the cats or run them with the cat videos and put that on the front page that I am the Kitten Except King. Except we had a disaster. Mm -hmm. So as we go into the closet in the second floor where we did a whole closet. And Robin put like 7,000 pounds of clothes on these, which are the wire ones, you know, mm. that are attached to the wall. Yeah. But if they're not in studs and you put too much weight oh, on can, them, just so right I go down. to reach for the leopard, uh, leopard jacket, it's just and in the drywall. entire thing comes crashing down. <sighs> I'm telling you, it has to be 700, 800 pounds yeah. of clothing because Robin took all the winter clothes and put them up there and didn't take into account that we didn't go into the studs. So I spent, an, I, we took it down, it took us an hour just to get all the clothes, pick the hangers up, yeah. put them on the bed, empty everything out, so I patched the holes, and now I'm going to have to go stud finding. Mm -hmm. And a lot of chicks have been doing that but during the coronavirus. I've been doing you know, that it's for a while now. <laughs> exactly. Hey, don't, uh, don't you use something similar yes, to that I to have, find the studs? I did, but I didn't think Robin would put like every single article of clothing you know, in the entire, the Goodwill well, stores don't have as much stuff on the racks. That's a cinder racks. block wall. With, so oh, yeah. we, we have no, to do we something. We have studs in there, and I'm going to um, have to find Trevor the from the 203 yes. says, Tony Bruno, Harry Mays, definitely ministering my wedding. Absolutely. Um, you know, once we can all go out again, people want to want to get married. I could even maybe do divorces. Yeah. Without having to go through the, the well, pain an attorney, and stuff. An no, I'll that. just pretend I'm an attorney. I'll just do those quickie divorces. You what see you, on billboards in other states? Joe Cordell? No, Cordell, trust me. Cordell and Cordell. They're legit. Are on Tony's shit no, they're, list they're right legit, now. Really? They're legit. But as I've said it about all divorce lawyers and domestic lawyers, they are cab drivers with college degrees. Mm. They want that meter to run. They don't want the case to end. 
They don't guarantee you, and we, unless we get a settlement, you get nothing. Mm-hmm. Nope. They keep, get, keep getting paid oh, the wow. longer it goes on it's and on and like on the, and the on. It's unbelievable. The entire system is it's rigged. rigged they forget so about the you elections have being rigged. to have yeah. a lawyer, a right. divorce lawyer, because otherwise the, the judge will screw you over, mm. which happened to Tony. <laughs> Um, and then once you do have a lawyer, they don't want it to end, so they're like in cahoots trying to. And anything, but I mean, it is over. You're divorced. How can it? How can it keep going? Because if the anything, Harry, you lived in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Now, when you got divorced, your wife. Uh, you, I was like, in North Carolina. Oh, so you didn't have to. Uh, Pennsylvania yeah. has the worst divorce laws in the country. Is that right? Oh, California's my God. bad too. Okay. And again, I don't want to go through the divorce. Listen, I had a great marriage for thirty years. Three great quick kids. I still talk to my wife, but the law's on their side, especially if your wife doesn't work. During your career, yeah. because she was at home with the children. I didn't tell her to stay home. She wanted to stay home and raise the kids. I was home every day with her. And so the bottom line is, if you're married for 30 years in the state of Pennsylvania and your wife does not have her own disposable income, you are obligated to pay to give her half of your income. Wow. And so that's how it works, and that's the law. I don't have a problem with the law. I abide by the law, unlike these other dirtbags who, who have, like, million dollars in back payments with their kids. Right. I didn't have child support. Well, what about if your income changes and it goes down? Does that adjust down? It should. It should. But it doesn't. No, well, I went to court and fought it because my income did come down. Right. But the problem is when Pennsylvania law went into effect, a lot of these dirtbag big money guys— and they're not all dirt bags. Guy's making a half million. Say a lawyer makes a half million a year, right? And his wife divorces him in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and she wasn't working. She wants half of that. So what he did, and this is you know multiple people, doctors, lawyers, anybody who made a lot of money, what they did is to try to get the alimony down, is they would quit their jobs and go become a public defender, or like do pro bono work, uh-huh. and pay get paid fifty thousand dollars a year. Then they would go back to the judge and say, You're "Your Honor, 25. I'm only making fifty thousand now," and so. To that reason, that's the reason why they changed the laws okay. so that guys wouldn't be able to get by the loophole of, hey, he's not. I legitimately had a loophole. I wasn't making the same thing I was making 10 years ago, right. but she got a forensic economist mm. to go and, and Tony testify. Got, it, Tony didn't think that he would need a lawyer for something like this. It should be self-explanatory. Look, at these are my taxes for the last five years. Right. My, my income has gone drastically Donald Trump down. hasn't shown his taxes. I gave him 10 years of tax returns. And you're still paying. But yes, because I Tony am, didn't have a lawyer, this is how it's rigged, they were like, oh, well, you know, the, guy, the, the person with the lawyer must be correct. What is wow. this, divorce court here? Yeah. Let's, let's get it back to the Eagles. Harry, let's get it back to Darius the Darius Slay. Darius Slay, bro. Um, you see his footwork? Uh, he's good, man. The, he's, 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 just I like just it. so that you like know, the, the, the comments, the excitement is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, the Powerful. Twitter's, blo- Twitter's Every, blowing up at Twitter, Tony Bruno Show on Twitch Twitter. Is blowing up. And then we have a comment here from uh, where is Tuna Fish? Tuna Fish saying that uh, Bruno and May's radio is like crack. Radio mm. crack. Jeez. It's true. When you, you start, once you that start. That makes your teeth fall out, too. Yeah, I look like I am going radio crack right now. You know what they say, Harry. Nobody got time for this. Exactly. No, they exactly. Exactly. And people are saying that I'm a saint. I agree. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Do you agree, I Harry? agree. Remember, remember, cocaine is a hell of a drug, Harry. Mm. As the great uh, Whitney Houston once said. No. Didn't she say that? No, I don't think that was her. Yeah, she did. No, she said crack is whack. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. R. Kelly said cocaine is a hell of a drug. No, it was Rick James. I think it was Rick James. Rick James said cocaine. Was, yeah. Everybody pretty much admits yeah. cocaine is a hell of a drug. Right. Did you see the uh, the Rolling Stones photograph of um, the coronavirus Rolling Stones? No. Yes. It's really funny. It's the entire Rolling Stones. Everybody's wearing a mask except for... Keith Richards. Exactly. Keith Richards. <laughs> nothing yeah. will kill nothing Keith Richards. Will kill Keith Richards. Now that's funny. Yeah, nothing okay. will kill Keith Richards. Yeah. That is absolutely As you hilarious. were describing I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I figured yeah. this you out. You know it wasn't going to be Mick Jagger, right? <laughs> Although, you know, he's got to be in that the realm too, right? I'll tell you, man. That but guy's speaking of shape. people dying of coronavirus, you know, there's yeah. a lot of people that, they're a celebrity. When a celebrity gets one, everybody thinks, oh my God, it's a celebrity. How are we going to live without them? And listen, I don't want to see anybody die, okay? I didn't want to see Tom Hanks and his wife die. I don't want to see anybody die. And they didn't, luckily. They got medication, like NBA players, the two mm. guys on the... Uh, on Rudy the... Gobert and uh, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, they, yeah. they got over it. They, they got the medication that some people say you could take and should take. Other people say don't take. But bottom line is, not everybody dies. In fact, there are more people who survive this 
then die. Well, I believe we have the lowest death rate right now. Exactly. Any place in Depending the world. on who you yes. listen to. If you yeah. listen to other people, well, we have more people this who This is are... why people that can't figure out statistics I'm not are bad. Just, I'm like, the worst not... at math. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you do more testing, which we, the United States, now that they have ramped it up and they got the, the original test kits were defective. Yep. And so that's how come they, we weren't doing as many as other places. As we were ramping up, we got test kits that actually work. And now we are actually doing more testing here in the United States than anywhere else. Of course, yeah. we have more cases. So more testing is going to produce more, more positive ca cases. Exactly. More positive cases, exactly. Now we have but based on the number of cases, the rate of deaths has actually gone down. The original uh, estimate was what four percent, which scared everybody the f out. I just wait. For, you know what? You know what? You know what? The thing about this story, having been a journalist for a long time, you know, we were around for nine eleven, all the different things that have happened in my lifetime over sixty seven years. There's never been a situation like this that changes by the hour, yeah. right. and that's what bugs me about the media and people who go on social media pretending that they know more than the doctors and scientists. I don't pretend that I don't know. I have no clue. You know how I find out? When the people who are the brightest minds on earth in dealing with this. This Dr. Burtz was, 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 was one of the preeminent HIV doctors when that virus started. Yeah, Dr. Fauci. These people just aren't amazing. just right. slap dicks off the street. We got a 152,631 cases right now in the right. United States. And according to this, 2,817 have passed. Okay, so, so what's words, the percentage? Passed away, dead. I, do you... uh, I can do that math here in a second. <laughs> I just got to get my calculator. I can't up do on it my in phone. my head. No, not in my head. But we do I'm not have a rain a, man. We, we try to keep it positive here. We're not going to sit here and give you death tolls by the hour and put countdown clocks. Dean, I'm sure, will come up with it 1. immediately. 1.8%. So, okay, so. 1.8%. Which is, you know, that's one, it's 1. still 1.8% 1. of the people who have been tested. Correct. Not right. of the population. Correct. And that's what some of these economists, these are people whose jobs it is to crunch numbers. That's all they do. And they can't get it right. I get slapdicks on TV like the 11th hour didn't know how much $1 million for every person in America was. But it's simple. Simple math I can deal with. You Complicated know, mathematical equations. Nobody knows. There are 4,087 cases in Pennsylvania right now, which is up 668. Those are new yeah. cases that they just came up today. Yeah, and I mean, so. you the thing the thing I know that people keep comparing. And Dean brought it up as well that that compared to the common flu, that the um, the deaths. Uh, let's see, thirty six million Americans with a common everyday flu, and thirty six thousand died. Now I know that a lot of people keep comparing the two because there is some things that are in common. However. The thing that is so different about the coronavirus this is much more contagious. It's much yeah. more contagious, and it has a much longer shelf life. Meaning, well, incubation that if you, period. Right, in other if words, you yeah. touch something, um, the common flu does not live on a surface for more than about four hours. They are fe they think that the coronavirus can live for approximately twenty four hours yeah. on something. That's and scary. That is yeah. scary. It is. That's the scariest part. So that's why you have gloves, and that's why you use. Antiseptics. That's why you, you know, you have. You, I bought a case of the Clorox things, yeah. and I always have them. All right. Well, here's my question, though. Let's just say you're at home. You mm -hmm. guys are just mm -hmm. hanging out at home. Because yeah. I want to hear what you've been doing at home. Well, I know you've been playing golf, but no. You've been. But let's like people say they're wiping down these surfaces every couple of hours. Well, if you and your spouse, yeah. let's say, are the only people at your house, right. you're, you're not having no, other people right. in. You're right. Exactly. Is that really that necessary no. to keep absolutely you know, wiping not. stuff down? That's all my question is. No, absolutely yeah. not. You're absolutely right, Harry. But when you go outside and go into a supermarket. Yeah, well, there. I always did the shopping carts long before this. I don't go to supermarkets. Oh, you got to deliver? He doesn't shop. No, the Lima's been, that's, you know, one of her. But are you, you know, doing the Insta? Now the Instacart you got to worry about because that I was hot. I don't know what that is. That's Instacart where they you, you, you call, you're like, you order it oh. online. You call Acme, Whole Foods, whoever. And then when you go, actually, we were in the store, and there's like 16 women walking around with carts doing Instacart on their phone. Oh, okay. People order stuff, and then they bring it to your house. Now, to me, that's dangerous because right. you got all these people. Other touching people it. are touching it again. And these people are trying to make a living. But remember, this is before this thing blew up. Instacart mm. before the coronavirus became a pandemic, and so now I'm not going to order Instacart. Yeah. We did it once because we weren't feeling good. It was a Friday night. It was cold. It was rainy. Yeah. So we said, "Hey, we needed stuff," and they brought it, and it was great. And you can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you what to do. But there are things that you to need do. to like. You need to follow the line of of 
the, the order of what might have happened. So just imagine what that delivery did. Yeah. Somebody somewhere is going shopping for you. They put it into a cart, so they're touching everything. Right. And then they put it into a box, so that next person is touching it. Then the delivery person takes that box, so they're touching the outside right. of the box, and then they put it in front of your door. Well, that's the thing. Like on cardboard, it supposedly lives on cardboard yeah. for yep. a while, yeah. right? Up to twenty four hours. Yeah, that's kind of scary. So, we don't start making money soon. I'm going to be living on cardboard, Harry. Put little. <laughs> it's got a keto too. I don't think there's any you carbs. Know, in you carbs. and I should have opened up a toilet paper store. <laughs> is what we should have done. But here's the thing: like, think about what I have in front of my door because whenever we get a delivery, because Amazon delivers within twenty four yeah. hours, right? right? And Instacart delivers within six hours. So the likelihood of there being a virus on any of those surfaces is pretty high. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, is instead of immediately just handing it or grabbing it from the delivery person, have them put it down, spray the outside with Lysol. Oh, my God. Or We're have gloves Depot. on. We're in Home Depot. Let's get this. No, this let me yesterday. finish for a second. Right. And then you bring it inside. Uh. If you do not need to open it up for 24 hours, leave it someplace, spray it in Lysol, leave it. Don't open it up. Oh, I'm dead then. Yeah. If you do need to open it up, Let me yeah. then yeah. open it up with gloves and wash the yeah. stuff that you can wash or, you know. Just I got a new Comcast box the other day. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. I needed an upgrade for one of my TVs. It came the next day. And I saw the box on my front porch, and I went out, and I was a little freaked out about it because I'm thinking, yeah. thinking about this. Do you cardboard. have any Clorox wipes or any other no, stuff? I don't have any of that stuff. Come on, Harry. You oh. need I'm going to give you one today. Yeah. In fact, let me go get how one how right long now. Is that last? I mean, you you had an operation. You had an operation not too awfully long ago. Is your doctor telling you that? that I haven't talked to him. Because I don't know. Does that mean that you're slightly more immunocompromised no, than maybe somebody else? My immune else? system is strong. <laughs> Kidding me. <laughs> you douse it with enough vodka, you're good. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but you know, the, but those are the kind of things. Like I was telling Tony, we were at Home Depot, and we're we're being careful all sell ourselves. But then he goes to pay with a credit card. Yeah. And he slides the credit card thing, and I'm like, "Give me your credit card before you put it back in your wallet." And he's like, "Why?" I'm like, "I want to wipe it down." He goes, "There's not going to be any virus inside the credit card machine." I'm like, "Somebody else handled their credit card. They put it in the machine, and now you are putting yeah. your card in that same machine." It could. It could have transferred. So those are the things you got to think of. Yeah, I can't think careful. that way. Well, let me show can't. you what kind of a team player I am, I ladies and gentlemen. It. This is a brand new 85 wet wipes. That's a virgin container? This has not been opened. Yeah. This is Clorox disinfectant wipes. Kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. Okay. This I'm presenting to Harry as a token of my appreciation <laughs> for rejoining me next Monday again. If and we want to make sure news. he stays healthy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> what if I'm not here? Monday, April 6th, Harry will be sanitized, deodorized, bacterialized. It's triple layered for five times the cleaning power. Nice. It kills staph, E. coli, MRSA, salmonella, step, and club. What the hell's club? Clem. Wasn't he on the Clem. Beverly Hillbillies? Did that guy? <laughs> Clem? Clem Kadiddlehopper. That was uh, Jack. No, what was his name? Art, not uh, Red Skelton. Oh, okay. Clem Kadiddlehopper. I, I know I'm old. So here they are, Harry. All right. Now, I bought a case of these, and look, fresh wow. out of the box. All right. Now, let's just say I do come down with it. And mm -hmm. I have a studio at my house. Yep. Can we tap in? Absolutely. Could I tap into this studio? If you had to, like, if you, if we all. As long as Catherine Tappen's not involved, then you'll get fired from your job. Well, that's well, yeah, Jeremy yeah, Ronick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we. If we had to go completely on quarantine, yeah. then uh, we probably could. But I, oh, actually, well, I'll have to find that you out. You need to take yeah. this call yes. live. I think we have a special guest calling in oh, right yeah? now. We have a special guest really? calling in at this particular time. That's Going cool. back and forth. We'll have him enter and sign in. Don't tell everybody who it is, Robin. Don't tell anybody who this is. You're going to like this, Eric. All right. You know this special guest, too. I do? Yes. Well, you know what I'm saying? like from which life? Uh, the previous life. Okay. That was the a glorious long time. life. That was the glorious life. The, uh, what is it? <laughs> Below Deck Life. Life oh, Below Deck. Is that good? Is that show any good? Which one? Isn't there a show called Below Deck or something about this crew that like runs a big like yacht? No, I don't know. I only Isn't watched the show? island. I, Bravo I watched or Life something? Below Zero, the, all the Alaskan people up there. Oh. Living all right, off Tony. The land. This next guest is ready. Let's go to the phones, ladies and gentlemen. Our first phone caller live here this on the big. Tony Bruno Show on Twitch. A mystery guest will enter and sign in, please. i tell you what, man. I love you, Bruno. How you doing? You doing all right? You doing okay, Bruni? Huh? 
so beautiful, man. I tell you what, I love this guy, Antonio Brunarski. A wits, oh, Bruno. Yes. He shortened it, man. I like and his it. family came over and signed in at Ellis Island. The Brunos, man. Yeah. I love this guy. I'm going to go high in the draft, I think, whenever they have it in a couple of weeks in Vegas, Coach. I'll tell you what, you're a tremendous, you're a tremendous athlete. You're, more the, you're a vocal athlete. Nobody says the word beautiful better than Tony Bruno. <laughs> beautiful. How about that, man? I might be a close number two. Put me on Mel Kuyper's big board. You're on the big board. I'm saying uh, round, what do you think? I'm a fifth rounder, Harry, with a sleeper pick. Well, you're like a, a day two guy. I'm a day two day guy. Two. Yes, That's like exactly. second and third round. Maybe third round. <laughs> the way they're going to milk this thing, that might be into the first round. This <laughs> Harry, do you know who our mystery guest is right now? Oh, it's John Gruden. Exactly. In Vegas. In Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. Walking, I think he's making sure the Bellagio fountains are still functional for the draft, even though nobody's, nobody's going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. I use those of... I use those as a bidet, Bruno. <laughs> That's a good idea. He doesn't have to waste time well, on we Clorox have the, wipes. We have two bidets in our. You've used our bidet, haven't I've you? I've never used your We've bidet. We've got a bidet right before no. the toilet. We, were, we saw so far ahead. That's the kind of prescient knowledge that I have. I see things. I see dead people. I see live people. <laughs> I knew that there would be a toilet paper shortage a year ago. And I bought two bidets from my house. So now I don't even have to use toilet paper. I just get that some bitch right up there. Bam! Cleans it up that's real a, good. That's a by Bruno bidet right there, man. <laughs> We're really utilizing the English language. <laughs> that's good alliteration right exactly there. Exactly right, baby. Now, if Morgan Freeman were here, you know, you know what we need today to really help us. In fact, he actually did a narration. Well, Morgan has a calming effect on people. Yes, and yeah. he actually did one from his own house. Yeah. Did you see it was on no, Twitter? Morgan no. Freeman was commenting. And, if, and everybody always says, who would you like to narrate your life if you had one actor, great voice, talents? Morgan Freeman's got to be yeah. up there. Top, he's on the Mount Rushmore. He's the Mount Rushmore exactly. of narration. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I believe that's a pretty good choice, son. As they sit there talking across their Twitch stream, speaking to literally billions of people one at a time, everyone knew that this show could only get better. Think about that for a second. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> I'm still thinking about those Bellagio fountains, man. <laughs> that's a power wash. Oh, imagine. Right that's in the middle. Right wash. in the middle, if you've ever stood there and watched them like I have. Many, many nights. Harry and I stood yeah, there and watched yeah. it with, with Miss Robin and the Lima. That's right. And then she got pissed off and said, let's get the hell out of here. We've been walking all night. On high heels. On high heels, which I told these women, don't wear high heels when you're on the strip. Wear them later on when we get back to the room. I have no idea what those Italian ladies were singing. But it really, it really didn't matter after about 25 seconds. <laughs> See, the one thing about having this man on, and no matter whether I was in person with me in L.A. in the studios, yeah. on the phone with us at Smith's when we used to do the midday show oh, yeah. at the restaurant in Center City, right. and he had my bike uh, he had my bike towed away that one day. Remember I had my scooter, right. and I parked it in front, and he went out and set up a cop to pretend that he was ticketing it and taking it away when I was legally parked. And that's when Chris Williams was there with us, too, oh, yeah? the, from the Ghost, Ghost Hunters. Hunters. Yeah. And I went ballistic and went outside and went crazy. That's because Frank Caliendo is a no good, dirty, rotten <laughs> bum. Did I really do that? Yes, you don't remember that day? I do a lot of sneaky things, but that's uh, that's awesome of me. <laughs> yes, <it> was. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you right now, Bruno. I'm in awe of myself. Yes, <laughs> the, the Bellagio Fountain bidet blast was absolute. If Rome were here right now, he would absolutely rack you for that. How great is that? Think about those Bellagio fountains. <laughs> any, any, I can't even do it. Anything on its way out from then on is a blast. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I, you know, I'm going to, this is going to sound terrible. Like, I, I, I don't want to say it is going to be terrible, but I'm like, I've never done that joke before. I'm like, why did I use that on Bruno? I should have saved that for myself, man. Well, you can use it. That's the good thing about it. You're a comic. I'm just a schlub on the radio. 
And I'll reuse it later, too. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I yeah. mean, see the kind, see how I inspire great comedic minds to, to be on, on top of their game? Because we don't rehearse. There's no prepared statements here. There's no script. I haven't talked to you in, what, a year when you were in Philly doing Punchline? And so here yeah. he comes on. We've been going back and forth, DMing. And he said, when am, I, when am I going to come on the show? I said, how about now we're on the air making our big announcement that Monday. Did you hear the big announcement? Did you get it in your inbox? Mo- uh, yes. I, I think go, go on about it. It's the Sirius and uh, – The Dan Patrick Perry. Channel, Sirius XM 211. Next Monday, Harry and I will bring it live 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern time on Dan so Patrick. Why did I call today? Why did I- <laughs> well, you can call what back I- next week. We'll have a bigger audience next week. No, we'll just play this back next week. Okay, let's play that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just rack it. Rack, rack it. that guy. I'll have to edit it a little bit. Because I wanted <laughs> you to be here on a big, this is a big day. I mean, next week will be a big day, too, and then there'll be a big day after that. Believe me, a Absolutely. tremendous day. It'll be incredible. It'll be tremendous. Believe me. And you can that you can believe. Now, what was the line yeah, on your truck? Give me a little Trump. Come on, man. We need to hear from the president. That way, I didn't know what you were going for, and you're doing a fantastic job, Tony, but it's tremendously tremendous. Add the adverbial L-Y, and then say the same word afterward, and then you've got it. Tremendously tremendous, fantastically fantastic, and everybody knows it. You're doing a great job, Tony. Can't wait to hear you on the Dan Patrick Show, the DP Show, doing a fantastic job. Love all of them. Love you a little more, because I'm on with you right now. And by the way, the number one ratings... Of all time, from the Celebrity Apprentice, my show. Great job. Incredible. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Bigly. That's another one of, you know, I, the, the words that Trump uses the most are tremendous, mm-hmm. I think is number one. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Right? Incredible. That's a Rome. That's a thing. Rome. I think yeah. he stole that from Jim. I think he, stole and I think he also I think does Trump... wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah. Yeah. No, he says incredible. Wonderful people. Yeah, yeah wonderful, everybody tremendous. Say, if, you, if you watch enough, everybody uses those same descriptive words. So you'll hear Rome, incredible, mm-hmm. phenomenal, mm-hmm. arugula. No. Um, <laughs> but you'll hear, I think it's the multisyllabic words, wonderful, fantastically, incredible. There's Bill Walton, how incredible is this? <laughs> Tony Romo, incredible and amazing and amazingly incredible. So everybody uses those same words all the time. I don't know if it has a lot to do with sports or what, but... Those are the same descriptive words. I think what Trump does, though, is he always he he doubles it up. He says it twice in mm-hmm. a row. Well, but I, like I said, it's fantastically, fantastic, fantastic, fantastically, fantastically, tremendously, wonderfully, fantastically. I yeah, the, <laughs> listen to this. This is how you actually do it. Uh, uh, bibbidi bobbidi boo. Those are my magical words. That's what I'm going with. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> oh, I have something for that. Did you today. hear the supercalifragilistic song out there now? I saw a little bit on Twitter. I think I saw. Um, I didn't really listen to it, but I saw people talking about it a, a little bit. It's, it's, remen- it's tremendous. It's this huge guy. Guy's like three bills at least, right? Maybe more. And again, I don't care yeah. about his weight. I'm not fat shaming the guy. I haven't seen this. But when you hear the guy's voice, you know, you know when you hear a voice and you never see the person and then you finally see him, you say, holy crap. We're going to yeah. play this now while we have you online. You're busy right now. You're going on with the... Uh, I know you go on with Pat McAfee a lot, obviously. You know, he won the Tony Bruno Award. When you were in his studio in, in Indianapolis, my, my, that, that microphone on his desk is the Tony Bruno Award. I, you know what? We talked about it on his show. He's going to actually be on my co- podcast, the Caliendo cast, this week. Um, we're going to uh, tape on Wednesday, and we're probably going to – the whole episode is probably going to be about your award. I you don't have to believe. do the whole show. Give me at least 15 minutes. That's all I want. <laughs> I can save on my car insurance, and then you can save and promote my show on Sirius XM 211 starting Monday, the Dan Patrick. I'm not on the Dan Patrick show. I'm on the Dan Patrick channel. Right. He has his own yeah. radio channel, yeah. He has a channel. You know how that works? Right. Yeah. You but follow I thought me? That's what I was saying. I didn't say you were on the show. I just said I liked – I liked all the people on the show. That's all I said. God, you guys are putting words in my mouth. Fake news. I know. I am <laughs> fake news. I want you to scold me like I work at CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch slap me like Wolf I work Blitzer. for CNN. Wolf Blitzer's baby. sitting back in coverage. He's not a blitzer. He stays back. He's not taking any risks. The quarterback has free reign. No pressure on him whatsoever. There's never been any blitzing from Wolf Blitzer. That's, he's, in fact, he's a sheep. He's a sheep in wolf's clothing. That's how bad it is. Unbelievable. An un, a non-blitzing sheep. That's what he is. 
the Hard one thing the one thing you did recently that killed, I'm man. I didn't mean to like s- slow you, you down. I stepped on you. I'm sorry, man. The That's one okay. thing you did I'm recently of another, I'm talking over you now, bro. I'm sorry. I just don't care. <laughs> the the recent thing you did is you did a Pat Summerall and John Madden breakdown of a of a clip on uh, on your Twitter stream and your on your Instagram stream and it was hilarious. Which one was it? Was it the one with the guy riding the? He was pretending to be a, a cowboy riding the lady who was a horse. That one or the one? There were a couple because there was also the guy who was using a fire hydrant as a bidet as well. A lot of bidets. Oh the, from- no no it was it was it wasn't the guy with the bidet because I used to do that when I was a kid on the street every week. We used to open uh, a fire, fire hydrant, hydrant and yeah. you do the they would call it the peacock. You put your butt down where that fire hydrant water is coming. Not only did it clean your ass out really good, but you'd make the incredible <laughs> it peacock. Would fan. It would it fan. It would fan, up. and yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. neighborhood yeah. would come out. Seventy-five-year-old women would come out with a with a bowl of spaghetti. That would blow <laughs> out your colon. Oh man, you talk about colon cleanse. Jesus. Shit, that was the best ever, man. <laughs> I cleanse my colon. I cleanse my colon. Yes, I cleanse my colon. So when are you coming back to Philly? Because the last time you were here, we went down and saw you, and you were doing, like, experimental comedy. Yeah, working on some music, but w- when does Philly open back up? <laughs> that, that's uh, like we'll, like well, if you were, you were a criminal, you could go out right now and roam the streets well, without right. any problem. But if you're a regular <laughs> citizen here, you just stay the hell inside, or they'll arrest your ass. You can't even go to a liquor store in Pennsylvania. No, How the closed. hell are we supposed to survive this? <laughs> How about that? That was another viral video. Did you see that guy? The guy who looks like Letterman, stay the F at home. Did you see that guy? Oh, yeah. yeah that, we got that yeah, one, too. That song, that song we got great. that one, too. We yeah. play the best hits. We only play the hits here. <laughs> We're not playing Counting fringe. We're not playing fringe B-sides on this show, Frank. Counting them down from number 10 to number 1. <laughs> Coming in at number 10, it's Drunken David Letterman with the Stay the F at Home song. <laughs> And let's play that right now. We don't want to come out of any up-tempo songs with dead dog dedications. Case, don't play it. Don't you come out of an up-tempo number. Don't you understand that? <laughs> I just, that's a why I haven't heard that thing in a long time. That was uh, that was like before things went viral. That went viral, Casey Case. I'm uh, getting Here? mad. Uh, wow, that takes me Let's back. play the number one song right now all over social media and every AM and FM radio station and all the iHeart stations where there's one person on 7,000 stations eliminating another 500 jobs. But let's go to David Letterman, ladies and gentlemen, with a great song, unedited, of course, because we are on Twitch. We don't have to play the, the dumbed down, we can't play this because people don't hear bad words. And if you're offended by bad words, you're listening to the wrong show. Take it away, David Letterman, dude. For these lyrics. The world has caught a virus, so I've written you a poem. We need your help to cure it, so stay the fuck at home. And if you have got 12 kids or you're living on your own, lock it down and isolate and stay the fuck at home. If you think you're not at risk here, you're living in a dome. It spreads faster than a hooker's leg, so stay the fuck at home. I need the gym, I need the beach, I hear you bitch and moan. You need to grow a brain cell and stay the fuck at home, but I feel fine. I don't feel sick. I'll go out on my own. How thick are you, you selfish prick? Please just stay the fuck at home. From L.A. through to Berlin, from Wuhan through to Rome. There's people dying every day, so stay the fuck at home. If you need to contact family, use Facebook, Skype, or phone. We've got the fucking internet, so stay the fuck at home. The only way to slow it down is isolate, not roam. Please help the world get back on track and stay, stay the, the fuck, fuck at home. home. Stay Watch the fuck mouth, at Robin. home. Stay the fuck at home. Don't Everybody now. Don't you fucking dick, please stay, stay the, the fuck, fuck at home. home. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, David Letterman and the... Uh, Where's the dude? Who's the bad uh, leader like there? He does look like David Letterman. He does look like Letterman. But yeah. that is... His name is uh, Robert E. Kelly. Oh, Bobby Kelly. Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> he fought out of Philly. He was... Uh, <laughs> Bob Kelly did traffic Exactly. In Philly, Bob he? Kelly, former flyer yeah. great. The Hound. Right. It's great knowledge. All right, Frank, where are you doing now? You, you're, What's going on with the kids? Because every time I see you, you have more kids. They're growing. They're they're older than me. What the hell's going on with you? <laughs> That made no sense whatsoever. I know. <laughs> I have two kids. Uh, my 50-year-old Joey, uh, 
Kelly and my uh, my 13 year old daughter Juliet, who does the John Gruden impression. Too. I'm trying to coax Joey into doing it uh, now too, because I. A few weeks ago, I asked him to do his John Gruden. He'd done it years ago, and I was doing some ESPN sketches. And he turns to me the other day and goes, I'll tell you what, man. I was like, geez, that's Barry White Gruden. Holy <laughs> so your oldest son is doing doing impressions now? That's a good job yeah, right he there. Yeah, he walked into the kitchen a couple weeks ago, too, and he goes, ah, my Madden's not that good. I'm like, first of all, you're 15 years old. What do you need a Madden for? None of your friends even know who that is anymore. And he starts going, hey, here's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but the game is everybody, still alive. I mean, the game, Madden's not doing them anymore, but the game yeah. is still, everybody of every age, I mean, people even remember me in the Madden games in 05, 06, and 07. It. I remember, and then you were really worried for a while <laughs> about me. Like, I don't, Frank, I love you, but I don't know. I like keeping this job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't do Madden when I come on. Now nah, you can do it. Just be quiet when you do it. That doesn't make sense, Tony. I know. You got kids. They're getting older. They're older than I am now. See, it was a joke. It means that we haven't seen each other for a while. And then, you know, I know people who've had kids that are now grown ass adults. And you say somebody, you see but somebody, they and they pass you up in, they pass you up in age. They yeah, because I become, I become younger. Like I'm 13 now, so your son is technically older than me when it comes to maturity and psychology, right? So that's what uh, I'm talking about. I'm talking not about physical age. I'm an old bastard. I'm a dirty old bastard. But not mentally. Old, mentally, I'm a child still. Okay. And that's why we love guys like Shaq mm -hmm. and Charles, you know. And, and, yeah, and it's childlike. And, and what's his name? Joel Embiid. Yes. They still act like kids. I think they're, yeah. One way I think that's great about them is the sense of honesty. That's the thing. And kids are honest and will say stuff. And that's, I don't know if it's childlike in, in terms of, to me, not always, it's not so much childlike in terms of um intelligence or something like that, but it's childlike in terms of just flat-out honesty and not worried about social norms. Charles Barkley will say right to somebody's face, you're an idiot knucklehead, and that people will be like, he's the only one who'll say it. When they have him on CNN talking about the news, well, it's really difficult right now. It's Charles Barkley. Why do you have him talking about the <laughs> Middle East? What, what's going on? Well, these idiots have me on. I'm going to do it and talk to him like they're knuckleheads as well. You know, what do you think, Shaq? <laughs> I agree with the first part, but the second part threw me off, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> the great Frank Kelly. Let me put my hands together, even though I have gloves on. <laughs> don't forget, wash your face, wash your balls, and don't touch your face. But you can touch your balls, especially yes. if you're alone, because no one else will get it. You follow me? I'm following you. I'm following you. So you can't go out either, right? So, we're how, so where do people find we're, your, your brilliance we're now? We're not stuck yet. We're not... I think that's going to happen very soon, but I don't go out anyways. I try to set a good example and stay home. I just figure the, the, the quicker we can stay home, and it's going to be over. I mean, I'm I'm not a – I'm always questioning the government and stuff. One of the – you know, I'm not a uh, – Are you part of QAnon? Are you uh, – oh. Are you, a Q, are you one of those QAnon guys? I thought that was a radio station. Does actually. he do the voices see. for QAnon? Does I don't he... know. I don't know what he does. No, but I, I'm not a – but I'm – you know, I'm one of those people right now. I'm just kind of like, ah, I'm just staying home. Tell my family to stay home. And let's see if we can get past this. And I think it'll be quicker. So, But um, you still have content. I mean, that's the great thing. You see all these comedians, actors, singers doing shows on, 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 on social online. media. Yeah, yeah like I mean, this did is... last night. There was something Elton John Yeah, iHeart did a thing. It was on Fox TV, yeah, too. Yeah, all the but, Fox yeah. platforms, but it was Elton John and Everybody Alicia was at Keys. their own home. Yeah, yeah exactly. They like, live, live performance parties. Yeah, it was parties, pretty cool. Yeah. I saw a little bit of it. Bad. Yeah, I, I haven't... I, you know, I've, I've been just watching Netflix. I watched The Stranger today or yesterday. I watched that all day yesterday with my family. And uh, that's a good one. Have you seen The Strange? No, no, no. I, I, I've been Tiger looking for King? some strange, but nobody's out anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty hard. <laughs> what about Tiger, Tiger King? King? Tiger King. We Robin and I watched it three nights. We didn't do all. You don't do seven hour binges, do you? Uh, no. We and we were taking breaks. We've been taking breaks. I watched that Tiger King guy. That every time I try to do the impression, it turns into the Larry the Cable guy. Can't <laughs> 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 hey, what that is right there. You gotta get. <laughs> no, I, I'm here. Carol, uh, what's her name? Baskin. Uh, yeah, Carol yeah. Baskin. We are just a big cat rescue. We're a wonderful group. Is that Carol Baskin? I will punch her in the neck face. <laughs> <laughs> How 
How about Frank Cowley? You're talking about a guy who's relevant. He keeps it fresh right. and he keeps it relevant. I mean, this just when, came out this week. When you're doing Tiger Cat, Tiger King, Tiger King. and Tiger Carol Cat. Daskin, not the Tiger Cats. I love The Thunder Cats were even better, actually. Thunder. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a good the, the, Tiger King doing Thunder Cats. Thunder, 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 Thunder. <laughs> so seriously, FrankCaliendo.com, right? Yeah, at Frank Caliendo on Twitter, Instagram, all the different stuff. At Frank Caliendo, if you can't spell Caliendo, so Caliendo is the letter C, the word alien, and the word do, at Frank C. Alien do. And the podcast is the Caliendo cast, caliendocast.com for that. And John Holmberg, Scott Long, and I do that. And sometimes I want to have you as a guest as well, or, as, as, but only after you're doing the, the, the serious radio show on the Dan Patrick serious channel. Exactly, because you don't want any Patrick local show. Twitch guys you know, with, with 15 million people. 1.7 million viewers. You don't want any of that no. small time shit. No, I, don't, no, I, I want the big time. The, exactly right. The big time. No, I no I'm going to be on. Be, I'm going to be on Twitch and Dan Patrick yeah, I Radio. I know. Okay. I, I'm not downplaying at all. I, I, listen, you've done so much for me in my uh, career. I appreciate everything you've ever done. I uh, will continue to support everything you do. Um, well, thank you. And I, I just uh, am glad to be friends with you, my man. I am too, and I, I, I always loved coming out to Hermosa Beach to the Comedy Electric and Light Show to watch you perform <laughs> regularly, <laughs> right after Jay Leno. Beautiful. Now, what was the name That's of that club? I always got, I always was, because when Frank would come on the show in L.A., he'd say, yeah, I'm doing the comedy, ma- it's a great comedy club in Hermosa Beach, and Jay Leno, when he was still on the air, would go there every Sunday night Is that to right? test out material in that crowd. Is that not right, yeah, Frank? I think he's still. I think he's still doing it now. He's right there. He's like, I know there's nobody here right now, but uh, I'm still doing it. I'm looking at. Hey, have you heard about this COVID nineteen? Have you heard about that? He's pretty good. He's pretty tough stuff. Eh? I guess uh, COVID eighteen was uh, not scary enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that? Is that place still there? Or did they close it down? Well, I'm sure. I'm sure it's still there. It's a great comic club, but I just don't. I don't think anybody can go anywhere in California right now. I know. Except on the beach to drink vodka out of each other's uh, crotches. I think that's... Uh, that, was that was Florida. That, that was, was Florida. Florida. Come yeah. on, Tony. Uh, same thing. Frank Caliendo, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Stand as one. <laughs> love you, Frank. I got to... You know, I love the one... My favorite picture when we were at 1540, the ticket, and you and I were in a really tight embrace, almost like kissing each other, which we could not do anymore and may never be able to do again. What? <laughs> Beautiful, man. <laughs> thank you, Frank. Appreciate right, you coming on, man. There Thanks, he is, Frank. the great Frank Caliendo. One of my all-time friends. Not just because he's talented. Now, his Gruden is incredible. Oh, he's, everything he does is incredible. And the way he can just go from one to the yeah, next. Exactly. You know? you know the one thing he's never been able to do, though, and he tried it? He could never do a Tony Bruno impression. Is that right? Not that there's a big demand for Tony Bruno impressions. <laughs> but he couldn't even do Tony's laugh. He kept trying. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't do it. That's surprising. The person who's come closest was uh, the guy, the caller from 97.5 in, in Allentown. Oh, yeah. Um, Mike, uh, Mike, Mike Yellick. 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 Mike, yes. Yellick. He, he had the laugh pretty much down. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's good. He does, his, uh, he does a little podcast. Yeah. On yeah. a weekly well, basis, Well, who does yeah. I believe. You know, what, you know, you know, when you meet somebody now, you see somebody, you say, there are more people who don't do podcasts mm-hmm. than who do now. It's like you don't have any street cred unless mm-hmm. you're doing a podcast. Is that right? Yeah. It's I like did getting like a tattoo. Five of them. And then I was done. That's it? Yeah. Come on. Huh? Now, I'd rather do radio. <clears throat> well, is this radio? This is not a podcast. Speaking no, of I radio. Know, I'd, I'd rather do what radio. What would you consider this? Is this considered a podcast? No. No, not anymore. This is, this. I mean, I think a podcast, it, it, this is digital radio, what we're doing. It's digital broadcasting because it's not just audio. It's also video. So yeah. digital broadcasting. It's multi-platform. I think that, yeah. yeah it's, it's basically like a radio show. On, on the internet. And there's a lot of radio shows on the internet. Not a lot of stations will take their programming and then play it again later and consider that a podcast. Mm-hmm. See, in my world, which doesn't really matter, is a podcast should be separate from something that's already aired on a radio station. You know what I mean? If somebody does a show, you would call that not a podcast. You would call that a re-air. Or would right. you go... And right. you go but, re- you can stream it on demand later on. Right, but they call those podcasts. They call those right. podcasts. Shows, to me, yeah. podcasts should be unique, original, content. original content. Not that the original show wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so, a lot of radio stations, pretty much everybody now, if you like a favorite radio show and you can't listen in the morning or you're sick or you, you don't, download the podcast, you download anytime. listen anytime yeah, yeah. you want. You can do that with this. So the term podcast is pretty much overused. 
Because you don't have to be an expert on anything to do a podcast. Mm. You could be talking about you know, anal fissures and have a podcast. And I should have done well, that for a couple of You might be an expert. I, I would have been yeah. an expert. Well, I think they would have had the president would have had me in the White House just explaining right. anal fissures. Uh, and then he would go up and say, tremendous anal fissure knowledge. It's, it, it, it's tremendous, incredible. I'm starting to sound like Rome now. I don't well, want to do a Rome impersonation. Imagine if you had that during the coronavirus. Anal uh, fissures? We did. I mean, we, th- we actually discussed that. We're like because that would not be considered an emergency. Although when you got the no 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 no, when you got the infection, it was. But when but the the initial surgery was not an emergency surgery. Wow! Like I told you, I can't even go get my teeth fixed. But but, my dentist isn't going back into the office for a while. Well, you need another dentist. But can you imagine? I told you, I got a guy for you. I know that guy. I used to go to him. Yeah, Doctor Kohler in Center City. Fantastic. In Rittenhouse Square. Yeah. Phenomenal. But but just imagine if you do have that. You're in pain. Incredible. (laughs) Because <laughs> Tony was in pain. Yeah. So the initial one was elective so that he would not be in pain anymore. But then he got the infection. Can you imagine being compromised no. and then going in and worried about, because where's the most likely place you're going to catch something? In a hospital. Right, right, oh, right, I thought right. you'd say the ass. I mean, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, no, I to, no, and by the way, never go ask the mouse either. You know, Don't but, go ask the mouse. We're, we're not sure that it didn't start that <laughs> way, are we? Seriously. You know what I'm saying? I told you who it started. Patient zero, zero. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne. This whole thing has started me to rethink all of my old habits. Yes, yeah, seriously, you know what I'm right? Saying? You're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Or thank God I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, Matt people from, have questions. Matt from Drexel Tony. Hill does it, Bruno Laugh. Matt from Drexel Hill. He's got the laugh down. Tony, we have a lot of people asking questions about how the show is going to differ once you are doing the show on XM. Serious XM. So, so you have to, first of all, you got to get a Serious XM subscription, mm-hmm. which pretty much everybody does. Let's be honest here. Well, I know, but I've talked to a bunch of guys this week that either let theirs lapse mm-hmm. or, you know, hadn't had it for years. And well, they're, a lot they're, of people, they're redoing it yeah, now. Yeah, because a lot of people got theirs for free if they bought a if new car a for a car. year, yeah, right? Yeah. And now, like my mom, my mom's really excited. She's going to be listening to the show, which means that she'll probably know when we're on and not call me during exactly. the show, which will be amazing. Well, wow. the show's on live, too, but she's in California, so obviously but, it's going well, to be noon to three, three there. Yes, three there, so yeah. um, it's 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern, and uh, it'll be streaming live audio only obviously on the Sirius XM app but we are going to be simultaneous on Twitch. Now the Twitch is going to change slightly because rather than being able to concentrate and um, bring up comments or whatever on the entire show we're going to concentrate more on responding to people on Twitch during commercial breaks because yes that's the other question. There are going to be commercial breaks. I mean, only that's, like three an hour. Though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's you know, and that's, we're not going away for twenty. We're not doing ten like minutes. Stern breaks. No, yeah, and yeah. going and away for twenty minutes. We have the clock. It's going to be very, very listener friendly. Right. And, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I love you know, Ro- Harry and I, Robin and I have been up to the Sirius Studios in New York multiple times. A few years ago, I almost took a job there with a great Steve Cohen. The great yeah. Steve Cohen, who I've known forever. I've known Steve Cohen since he was producing Mike and the Mad Dog right. in New York. And now he runs the sports department, got a lot of great people, Bruce Murray, Mad Dog. I know all these guys, so many great talents on all the sports platforms. And as you know, they've got every, every conceivable channel that you oh, want. Yeah. And so you turn it on in your car. I mean, I listen to, you know what I listen to most of the time in my car? Uh, let me guess. What channel? Huh? Chill. Sirius XM 53. The chill channel. Yes. The chill channel. Yeah. I knew it. I knew because it. I don't want any news. I don't want, and now there's no sports. Well, and, you want to decompress when yeah, you exactly. listen to stuff like that. I get in the car, put the chill on. Give me a little uh, Nora and Pure. Oh, Give yeah? me a little uh, Nora Jones. No. no, 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 Nora Jones. Nora on, on Pure. Pure. Oh, okay. And there's also another Nora, some other chick. They're both like Nora Van Elken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of Noras on there. Yeah. By the way, uh, I have been on Vivid. You know, Vivid Radio. There's a channel. Too. Oh, there is. Robin and I were on Vivid Radio. Well, you more than me. Well, there was there's Playboy Radio too, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah, sure, no, but I thought there, there was. There is Playboy yeah. Radio. But so we were when the, when the Super Bowl was in New York. Remember mm-hmm. that Jesus, year? Jesus, Channel yeah. 38 and Channel 7. <laughs> that's where the play. That's where Vivid I'm Channel. Assuming, yeah. So Robin and I go to New York, and there was a party. There was a uh, what club was up there? It was the Vivid Club. The Vivid Club. They the opened brand the cabaret. New. It was a strip club, but they renamed it the Vivid Club Super Bowl week. And it was right off Broadway, 42nd, mm-hmm. on a side alley. So we get invited by Marcy and our friends at Vivid Video. So they come up to the Vivid Club. So now Robin are up, and I are up there. We didn't have a hotel. We just drove up to New it York. It was the year park. that the Super Bowl was in New York. That's what I just yeah. said, Robin. 
Again, are Hello? you listening to the show? Are you listening? Do those headphones work? Wait, I got to give her. Well, let me bring out the Are they just right props? Finally. Oh, God, I haven't had one yeah, in forever. Yes, we have a mug. What does it say right there? <laughs> that says, uh, give her one of those. <laughs> give her. Give her. I got to put it in the front. Give it? her one of those. Yeah. Yep, yep. Thank you. It's a, two hours and, or an hour and 42 minutes for that. I know. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, no, that's my. That that's might be a record on the other end. That is. It's usually in the first five minutes I have to give Rob one of those, or I give myself the. The good thing about this show yeah. is if I screw up and say something stupid or make a mistake, the people on the Twitch stream they come they right do at it you. For you, yeah, yeah. They yeah. come right yeah. at you, and then and then the, and I stand corrected. What I don't like is when somebody corrects me when I'm right, Harry. Mm. When I'm right, and like, um, and not to name names, but when I'm right, and someone by the name of Robin. Tells me that I'm wrong, mm-hmm. then sometimes I have a tendency to go get a little nuts, bat shit crazy, <laughs> without even eating a bat. I'll go bat shit crazy. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> now, it's funny you say that. Okay, bat shit crazy. Next week, on Monday, we won't be saying that kind of stuff, right? You can. Yeah, no, we're but not going to. We won't. The, we're not like, going to be dropping f. We, right. we don't really drop f bombs just to do it. Mm-hmm. I we, think you we, can still say batshit crazy, but but yeah, the f bomb is probably yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. like to say the f bomb. No, I usually wait for women to say it first before I even well, think yeah. about saying it. And trust me, women say it a lot more than a lot of guys that I know. And, well, then you know you're in too. Exactly. And I have been trying to groom our uh, Twitch chat room and followers it to to be a little bit more clean because mm-hmm. you know we had gotten quite blue every now and yeah. then. I don't think that's going to fly. And it's no, not going to quite I mean but point. but um the fun thing about Sirius XM is that it is unlike terrestrial radio. We can be a little bit more free. Mm-hmm. We can yeah. talk about subjects that terrestrial radio probably would frown upon uh because you know the corporate stuff. But you know we we also know that we are now going to be coming going out to the masses, so we want to make sure that it's appropriate for everybody. But how exactly. about, I mean, is this like the craziest thing? Some people must think we're crazy because we're starting a sports-geared show right. when there's no sports. Exactly. <laughs> no, you're absolutely it's right. It's a Aaron. unique opportunity. It, really, me, it is. Because you know? Listen, everybody in the entertainment business is not being able to do what they normally do. Right. News people are focusing. Well, news people, this is news. Yeah, th- this is big for them. This is news. Yeah. But if you're talking about sports channels, yeah. ESPN, all of these content providers, you know, what are they doing? they got to rerun stuff. Mm-hmm. Are they rerunning NCAA championship games? Because there's nothing going on. I watched some of that yesterday. Yeah, that's fun. It's fun to click yeah. in that stuff every once in a while. As long as it doesn't interrupt. And now that I'm finished with the, uh, the Tiger King. I what made next? A, like, what am I going to watch? Darts? I love darts. I got Tony a dart board for his birthday, and we are going to put hang it, it up. up. So, so they we'll may have... do that in breaks. Well, that's yeah. what like Dan does. Dan has they shoot hoops. Oh, I know. I used to do it. Remember, yeah. I used to fill in for Dan. Right. We went up there for a whole week and did Dan show, and I was dunking basketballs, and it was incredible. Did he have a golf simulator? Yes, too? he did. He had yeah. a golf simulator. He had we everything. We need to get one of those. So we little, actually will, we're going to have the dart, uh, the dart board at the end of the hallway, so you guys can play darts during. The, yeah, and, I can't hit on iron in here. No, there's no. not no. enough. Uh, I got seven foot. Harry, this was six feet. The ceiling. Yeah, I only dug down. I didn't do it. I didn't dig down, but we did the wall. The work in here, as you know, Harry. Mm-hmm. I'm very handy with this. Yeah. Thing. Robin and I did everything in here with Luigi helping a lot with the grunt work. It's amazing. It's amazing. You should and have seen incredible. this. Incredible. It's so incredible. We are Tremendous. working on a lot of different things. And um, we, uh, the fabulous Joe Krause, uh, Jacob Media, he is um, my other executive producer. And he and I together are. Working on, we put this thing together, and I, I'm so happy that Joe saw the vision I had for years and uh, realized what a great team you two are. Everybody else knew it. The fans knew it. But um, he's the impetus that made this happen, and we can't thank Joe enough. No, he's done a great job. And, you know, because we tried to do this about a year and a half ago, too. Yep, and exactly. it just never quite got, you know, No, going. I mean, the great thing about Steve Cohen and Sirius is when you know people like that and there's a big operation and there's a lot of sports content, mm-hmm. you know, Steve calls me. I see him at the Super Bowl every year, run into him. He's one of the greatest guys. It's not just because he runs the sports department. It's serious. He's one of the most well-respected sports minds in the business. So he knows who all the talk show hosts. You know, I've been around a long time on national radio, so obviously he knew me from then. He knew me when I was working at ESPN, when I was working at Fox. And so I've been fortunate to be in that echelon of guys that most of the people who run these sports networks know, because right. I work for pretty much all these sports networks. And so I'm, I'm privileged 
to have Steve think of me as, hey, you know, we need to get Tony back on Sirius. In fact, he said it to me when the last time I saw him. You know, I want to see a name tag. When it's a Super Bowl, I want to see it say Sirius XM on mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Because he wanted me to be a part of it. So when, when somebody keeps saying, you know, we want you to be back on our, our platform, and again, I don't actively go out and look for jobs. You know, I, I do. I, I, well, <laughs> you're going to have to do it now, Robin. You better get your ass out there and start uh, I've been working on shelves. this for a while. Um, hey, we have somebody on the line that would like to congratulate you, too. And anybody else that would like to call in? Is congrat- it my mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> she probably can't hear the phone anymore, but go ahead. Hello. Hello. What up, Bruno? Harry? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, a man who just about a month ago was telling me how I lost opportunities to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then something went terribly, terribly wrong, just like VH1's Behind the Music, Harry. Dean oh, from Clearwater, geez. Florida, a man who is now destitute. He is now cruising the beaches. <laughs> Even though the beaches of Clearwater had finally been closed, yeah, they've been closed you can still breakers. go out there because Dean's out there with, a, with one of those metal detectors is that, is that looking that to find bullion, Bitcoin, <laughs> fabulous jewels, <laughs> left-behind nipple rings, clit rings, anything oh. metal. He's out there with a metal detector like those other pathetic old dudes, which I will be doing. You've got to disinfect years. those if you find uh, one absolutely. of those rings. Did you find any of those no. clit rings? Did you find any of the... The Tiger King 17 earrings that he may have dropped when he went down to Tampa to try to kill that bitch? That's really attractive, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I, unfortunately, I know nothing about Tiger King. I haven't watched one second of it. Have you been to the Big Tiger Park down there in Tampa? Uh, big, no, I did big Tiger Rescue. I never went to that either. I didn't either. Yeah. I went, we, we went to and Zoo I Tampa. We went with, with they Dean. got a nice zoo. Yeah, when we yeah. were down there for the Steve Dumick for yeah. the Steve Dumick Memorial, Dean and his wife took us to te- Zoo Tampa. We got the back seat, back the uh, back door tour. So oh, to for, the, for the big dog, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He wasn't no. He, the memorial was right, in Tampa. right, right. But when we were there for a couple of days, we stayed at Dean's place, and then we went to Zoo Tampa, and it was like a thousand degrees out. Remember mm-hmm. how hot it was? It wasn't that hot. It's a thousand <laughs> degrees, man. I had a thermometer with me. <laughs> It was a rectal thermometer, though. But, exactly. You know, you got to you got to cake. You know, never knows. They're the happen. most accurate. You know? Yes, they are. Yes, they. Are. I don't need that <laughs> much accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I was almost, I was almost hanging out on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge last week when the stock market plummeted. But that's why I told you keep half your money in, half your portfolio in cash, and I've been just buying like crazy last couple of weeks, last couple of days, excuse me. So it's all good. But hey, listen, congrats on your new gig, man. It's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I think Dean had Dean and our buddy AJ in San Antonio may have had a little inkling that this was coming. Oh yeah, but I didn't tell anybody. What like those senators that shorted all their stock? Exactly. And yes. No, no, he in- didn't do that. They had insider trading information. No, I mean, I no. Dean and I are friends too, and yeah, AJ. Yeah. You know, we yeah, talk Tony a lot. Told me. Go back and Tony forth. Told me, but I didn't say anything. And so you know, and listen, I, I I didn't want to tell everybody because actually people were tweeting it yesterday. I don't know where they got it from. Yeah. No. Because they- pretty much all of us. Had been sworn to secrecy, and we weren't working on it because, by the way, it wasn't in, in well, it wasn't in ink until a couple of days ago. Right. So right. we didn't want to make an announcement a month ago, and then all of a sudden the coronavirus thing happens, and then we don't know whether right. we're going to have the equipment. It was supposed ready. to. We were supposed to announce it at the Super Bowl, right? And then uh, one thing happened, and then another. Well, that's and why then I took the month off. Yeah, and yeah. Then, ended up being exactly, two months. Yeah, and then little the, did you know that you went down to Florida and went golfing in Hilton Head. Right. That you'd get another two months <laughs> off know. after that. I know. I <laughs> know. Yeah, it was it was just one thing after the other after the other, and then you start wondering. You're like, oh crap, is this really going to happen? happen? Is really right. going to happen, or is something? And then the coronavirus hits, and, and I everybody's like, oh no, like, this is just not meant to yeah. be. But exactly. I was like, no, I am not going to accept that this is I, this is going to happen. And so everybody's been fantastic, and we just uh, we can't thank Sirius. Uh, enough Steve Cohen for loving Tony the way he does over the years and uh, we thank the engineers for still managing staying up late to do this extra testing just for us so that we knew that we were connecting properly and uh, and Pat Kaneen for stepping in last minute and helping us out with that as well on this side and um, everybody so Tony, I'm getting emotional now you just said you could, Tony you just said you couldn't hit an iron downstairs you can't hit an iron outside. <laughs> bullshit! I was good with my irons. I couldn't hit the. W- I couldn't hit. Oh, that's a that's a blow. That's, that's a bullshit, blast. man. I hit a great three wood once in my life, though. That's all I know. I hit one of the yeah, greatest yeah, three wood approach that. shots in the history of golf. Dean from Clearwater with a blast. Great, great golf blast. Hey, speaking, Epic. Of, speaking of, so so this new gig is it going to be a different phone number? 
I don't know yet. No. No, we're going to use the same yeah, one. Yeah, we can use are the same we? phone number. Okay, yeah, because cool. because remember, cool. serious operations are in New York. Right, right. So we will be sending right. the show exactly. from here or wherever we are to New York okay. through the uh, through our high speed internet, and then everything that comes to the show we. We originate the content here. Mm. So the same thing. We'll so the keep studio the phone line, number. 215-462, Tony, okay, it's so easy. It's still, so it's still Tony. T- it's it's, a, the same it's 215-462-8669. And Robin Beautiful. got that number because she tried to find out you know, a combination. of Like when I was at Fox, I had my own number. And then there was a 99 on Fox number. So most companies, when you work for a specific organization, and the thing about Sirius is you know, there's a million different shows all working out of different studios. So they can't have one general line for people to call in so each show probably has its own dedicated line so that the callers aren't calling 15 shows and say i want to be on with the chris cuomo this afternoon on potus Mm -hmm. you know what i mean or mad dog on his show so mad dog has his his infrastructure and we have ours and the good thing is while we were doing the beginning of the show here in the wine cellar studio and this is not you know everybody who's been watching the show and listening knows we've been doing the wine cellar studio for well over a year Right, Robin? Maybe longer than that. Yeah, yeah, it's been more than a year. And so we didn't do this because we we're anticipating a pandemic. We figured let's have a place where we can not have to worry about where we're going to do the show every week. And, and so we, we put all this stuff together. Robin's done all this amazing work with the technology. And that's what we were doing here. So we're trying to make it better. When we shut down for a few days, it's either because somebody's sick, or I lost my teeth, mm-hmm. or we're trying to build a studio. Or and, a fissure. Or a fissure. Yeah. No, I still was fish- worried. You're waiting, on, you're waiting on a package from AJ to, to enhance the studio. Well, we're doing we're doing all sorts of stuff because we're going <laughs> to hang. One of the things that we'll be doing is we're uh, we have different mic stands coming, so they're going to be hung from the ceiling so that we oh, can. We always un- love I love I love low yeah. hung fruit. And uh, is that and low or the low hanging fruit? It'll be a you know, well and studio. while while we are hanging the mics, we could also hang that yoga swing yes. while we're at it. A, a sex swing or a yoga? It, no, it's called yoga. a yoga swing. It's a yoga swing. One of our yeah, listeners yeah, sent it. For whatever you want. Yeah. That can be your seat. I, it oh, would really? probably no, be way no, more no, comfortable. No. I gotta find a ceiling joist up there. Make sure I put that baby right. in there. You that can't be like that coat that hangers no, 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 in the closet. Not... That thing will come right no, down. This has got to go into Get out a your stud finder, Robin. Yeah, yep. <laughs> she's got a stud finder right here, baby. I'll tell you that oh, right well, now. Thanks, yeah. Dean. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. All right, guys. In fact, I'll talk to you later. all right. There he is, uh, Dean and Clearwater. By the way, speaking of stud finders, over the weekend we did have a special guest was looking for a stud, and then we had to oblige, of course. Ay, papi, qué rico. Dame más, dame más, dame más. Now, that's what I'm talking about, huh? Or as Harry would say, I am pissed off. Exactly. <laughs> now, we have another regular caller who would like to call in and congratulate. This is Trevor from the 203. Get out! Get I'd like out! To give it up. A round of applause. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, I'd like to give a round of applause to Harry and Tony coming back to Sirius XM. <laughs> See, we have we a studio. Uh, it's not like Colbert and Jimmy Kimmel are sitting at home in a room. Right, right. We have our own studio audience here. <laughs> we want a laugh track, though. Back. Thank you. We need, you know, what we need, we need to find out. We need to call the producers of Big Bang Theory mm. and get their fake studio laughing at every single word that's ever said on that show. Have you ever noticed that? I, I watched a lot of that show. Yeah, but I don't, I don't watch it. But in another room, I can hear yeah. like every single word. I watch. Everybody it. laughs. I'm like, everything's not that funny. Nah, some of it was funny. No, I'm not saying it wasn't a funny show. Yeah. I'm just saying everything right, that's right. said on the show. Well, that's all those shows. Yeah. You know, dating back to all What do they give people? Quaaludes? Sitcoms. What do yeah. they do? Give people <laughs> drugs to come in? I'm going to say drugs and maybe too much happiness. Exactly right, man. Yeah. Um, glad to have you back during this pandemic. The pandemic podcast is back, by the way. I'm glad to have you back to make my day go a and little bit. And you know, he works. Now, this man... Trevor from the 203 right? in Connecticut. Yeah. Chris Murphy's yeah. area up there. The great senator, Chris Murphy. I joke because I don't care. Uh, he works in a, in a fitness place that does Soul Cycle. Oh, okay. And he always gives us ratios. You know, you like the ra- how many women to men Isn't on a Soul Cycle? Isn't that owned by the Miami Dolphins Yes, owner? it is. Well, the breaking news, though, he doesn't work there any longer. They laid off everybody. We all, well, of course. Yeah. It, yeah. Got, yeah, I, I, we all got laid off. <laughs> How could Soul Cycle not be an essential performance for the men out there who just want a little entertainment in their lives? Oh my God. 
Agree, agree. Who cleans off but those seats? I've been, do- I've been running, and the, the honeys are out there in Westport, by the way. <laughs> now imagine all the stuff that's on those Soul Cycle seats. On now, seats. when you work there, you had to clean them off like every ten minutes, right? Every, I had to go in there and clean them every like thirty minutes, anyways. Now you got to clean them like every five seconds. Yeah, or uh, every every two seconds, pretty much. Well, you could take Crazy. them and put them in a, in a in a Ziploc and send them to Japan and sell them for voyeurs over there. They like that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, they like underwear, <laughs> used hey, Trev, things. Oh yeah. We have tons of people that are calling in right now. Hey, I gotta go. I have a meeting to be at right now in a minute, so I'm about to be running late. So peace. You're supposed to stay safe and Thanks, stay in Trev. sun and have fun. Stay at home and have fun. Listen to this show and have fun. Get away from all the noise. You know what I'm saying? Now we have another special caller who you both know very well. Male or female? Go ahead. Congratulations, boys. I'm really excited for you guys. I know who that is. That's Temple University's own. Colin. Tampa Viper now on the shelf. Colin Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. If, if he gets signed by a football team, you know the league is going to fail. This has happened to him twice now. I know. So, I mean, the NFL just needs to sign this guy. I agree. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't the Eagles just sign him? Exactly. It's ridiculous. Well, knows, We're, we are – I got a great agent, Warren Smith, and Pro Star Sports. I you had do. A great, great year in the XFL. Uh, I had a blast, and I love the league. It was first class. But I, I wanted to call and congratulate you guys. I grew up listening to you guys. You're the reason why I got into this stuff. You're two of my role models. I always say you two, Harry Donahue, there's a couple guys that have got me into this. And uh, I, I love you guys. I'm thankful for you, and I really cannot wait to listen to your show. So congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate I, I it. Saw yeah. the, uh, I saw the note. I mean, our Twitter is being blown up and all the great uh, messages from our friends and listeners and loyalists. Except my family. I haven't heard from anybody in my family yet. Good thing I don't have to see Sorry, them we're family. <laughs> No, but I'm kidding. I tell you, I was watching that XFL, man. I was, lo- I I was love- loving I know. the Vipers. I was loving it. And how about P.J. Walker from Temple? He's the MVP of the league. I know. You know yeah. what? This is the first time I have had a personal friend playing in football. <laughs> and it is different perspective yeah. when you see your guy on the field and you're like, that's Colin! Yeah, but when why Colin did- <laughs> made that, on, I have it on tape. I oh, actually, that catch? Yeah. Yes. I actually was watching the game. I, I said, I got to stop. I got to play that back. Yeah. And I actually videoed. I went back on the tape. The deflected catch off the hands of the running back, and he makes an unbelievable diving Incredible. catch to keep the drive alive for your Tampa Bay Vipers. Yeah, that's that's from catching all those bacon, egg, and cheeses at Tollman Man Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for the entire fall doing Eagles games with, with you guys, and leading the Got blocking it. up front. I mean, you're you're a you're a five tool player. <laughs> if John Gruden were here, or Frank Caliendo doing a John Gruden. I think he would put you back and redraft that uh, that draft class. <laughs> I think Gruden is Gruden is like every single quarterback that ever came out. Like if you go back and watch oh, yeah. the QB stuff, he thinks every single guy's going to be a pro bowler. <laughs> yeah, now, especially when he had that quarterback camp show. Remember? Oh, show? absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah let me ask you, Colin, because obviously the league had to shut down too, and you guys only played what five games, four or five or six? Yeah. Was it six? How many games did you guys get I think in? It was like five. Six. We just oh, was we it five? stopped the Thursday before the Saturday game. So it was five games in, and the league, to their credit, because everybody, you know, the, the haters were out there saying, oh, this league's going to fold, they're not going to make it. And then when the league stopped, you guys got paid for the rest of the season, right, from the, from the, uh, the people who yeah. run the organization. Yeah, so we'll get paid minimum the rest of the year, which is still great living. The fact that they – it doesn't surprise me. Everything the XFL did was first class the entire way through, but we're getting paid. The only thing is you, you, we got an active game bonus. And then you had a win bonus on top of that. So if you won and you were active, which they did in Houston, we did one time. But, uh, you know, you made some pretty good money. But if we're making decent money now. And, again, it's, it's fantastic. They're paying us. They don't have to do it. They, they mm-hmm. were first class all the way through. And, you know, people say, well, it's not going to make it. You know, the ratings went down. It's the ratings were still better than college basketball or some NBA games on the weekends. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying it's yeah. better than the NBA, but I'm saying – you know, when you look at the numbers, a lot of people on Saturday afternoons in the wintertime, they're mm-hmm. flipping around. And as big as football is, I thought, I thought the quality of the play, I think the officiating, I think the way they got the replays, I, I think had a lot of things that the NFL should institute. The new innovations that they uh, were brilliant. Especially me. the replay. Yeah. Going up to the booth and getting an instant mm-hmm. reaction, yeah. watching it transpire, not having a guy, Al Riveron, sitting in a studio in New York. And, it wasn't and he's <laughs> watching every game. By the way, Al Riveron was watching every game in the NFL 
you guys had a different person at mm-hmm. every game in the stadium making the decisions there. And not only that, but you could see the deliberation, which yes, was really yep. interesting, why they made the decision that they made. Which And then the guy in, in the, the NFL, booth would tell the guy, don't. all right, here, second down, place it at the 35-yard line, uh, yeah. put this back on the clock. It was a well-oiled mm-hmm. machine for a brand-new league. I thought they did a terrific job with that stuff. They did. The the broadcasting stuff was fantastic. They got it. They took the things that are concerning, health of players, uh, better product. Let's keep the ball in play more instead of punting it out of bounds. We're going to kick it in bounds. If you punt it out of bounds, it's a penalty. If you kick it out of bounds, it's a penalty. Okay, let's have another quote-unquote touchdown try because you have to run it and throw it in. You can't kick it. Yeah, and I thought the extra point stuff was great. Yeah, That was really innovative. And even, you know, as simple as the design of the ball itself. It made it easier to see uh, from a, if they were doing a long drive. You could actually see and track the ball, where sometimes I would lose it with a, just the plain brown. I never lose the ball. Yeah. I keep my eye on it all the time, baby. <laughs> no, yeah. it was great. They, they, did a, they did a great job. I enjoyed my time there. I made a, met a bunch of great people. I think the league will only get better because now you have guys saying, you know what, I'm not going to retire. Your pool is going to be bigger. It happened, I think, with the AAF. That's why the XFL, I think, got a solid backing. Half of us played in the AAF. But now your pool's bigger of guys that say, I'm going to keep going because I can go do that, worst case. Best case, I'm in the NFL. There was a kid, one player this year that foregoed his last year West Virginia, played for St. Louis, and now he's eligible for the NFL draft because he played technically three years out of high school. Mm. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think it was first class. And, and again, I, I think they will only get better. It's all about your quarterbacks, and they pay quarterbacks a lot of money. They paid them separate than we did, at least the eight selected. So happy for P.J. Walker. There was nine Temple players in the league or eight Temple players in the league, which was second among any school in the entire XFL. It doesn't surprise me or, or all three of us right. are Temple grads. So uh, I'm excited, and uh, it went well. And a lot of guys will make the NFL out of it. We're already seeing it. So now what do you do now? You wait around? Because obviously the draft's coming up. You see the free agent signing periods going on in football. Most of the big names are going a lot of really stunning trades. Oh, I mean, yeah. did you think yeah. you would see the movement that we've seen in the offseason in the NFL so far? I mean, it's been incredible. The NBA started all this years ago, right? The creativity of salary caps and moving people and draft picks. And this used to never happen in the NFL, right? Maybe one time a year. But now guys are moving for late-round picks. The DeAndre Hopkins trade, my girlfriend's family, they're all from Houston. You know, her, I talked to him heard that all the time and he's just like what is happening man that was a steal i know it was it was a bit was one of the biggest shocking trades you'll ever see in the nfl he is that good because of the quarterbacks he's had we all know he's got the con watson now but think about who he had before he didn't have any he was like uh i love tom savage he's a philly guy tom savage i think kitna was there whedon Mm -hmm. and this but this guy's been great all the way through he's different now he doesn't practice i think that bothered uh, Bill O'Brien. Bill, yeah, Bill, yeah. and and you know that's not the New England way, and I I don't know they're going to run the ball I think to protect Sean more, but David Johnson really hasn't had an amazing year since what sixteen. So, that was his rookie year, right? Where he had that great yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, great but then year. they weren't using him either. You know, then there were he people wondering. Too. He had injuries, and people saying fantasy players. With oh. A lot. oh my God! Oh, how do you a not put him in? Bust. Yeah, oh, how, they, how, how is this guy not getting me points? I keep starting him every week, and he right. doesn't do anything. <laughs> Arizona next year is going to be a legitimate contender, and I'm not saying one player does it, but they may be able to score a ton. I, I do think their offensive lines improve. Improve. They have some draft picks. Yeah, and Kenyon Drake did a nice job for them last year. He after did. They acquired great call him. from Miami. Yeah. Yeah, no, for Miami. Miami's got to be a sleeper team. I don't know what they're going to do quarterback wise, but they signed a ton of really quality players. Starting in Philly with Cameron Grugier Hill for nothing, which yeah. I thought was, could have been an easy sign for the Eagles, but that's a different thing. Well, you yeah, see who that, else left today, right? No Brady in that division, too. So that division's now, like you, Buffalo. You see, is you see who the Eagles lost there. today, right? I did not. Ron, right. Ronald Darby is gone. Oh, he's going to the Redskins. Yes. On a one year deal. Ronald yeah. Darby is signed with the Washington Redskins, yeah. one year contract. So another one of the guys who've been around here for a few right. years on the defensive back. So the Eagles have basically redone their entire secondary. Yeah. Other than at What's linebacker. Yeah. I think it was needed, right? But they're 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 pretty cheap on the market. Who are you going to bring in? That's the question, right? Like Darby was like three million. I think he signed for Bruja Hill signed for like one million. Yeah, I mean they're veteran players. They're not number one true guys, but you need twos and threes to make make plays and add depth. I mean, even New England's just full of like depth players everywhere, and they play together. So who knows? But um, 
Yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm fired up for you guys, though, man. My dad is. We're big fans of your guys forever. Well, everyone is. So I'm really excited to listen to your show. Well, th- thank you, Kyle. It was Thanks, great man. to get, get to know you in all the football games, all the season we did together, all the pre-games and post-game shows. And you're just a great guy, man, and, and your family and your, your lovely uh, partner there down in Florida. Now, you didn't go on the beach down there when you went down there, right? Did you go on the beach and do crazy shit well, on the beach? On with the beach. Here's the thing. We're on the – well, when the, when the league folded, the Vipers, like – any football team does that fold at least back to back years in a row. You go out and have a good time for about 48 hours and then everyone disperses. Um, it's just kind of a natural thing. When the season ends, you go have fun and then everyone rolls. So we did like uh, a couple bars in Tampa and then the next day we went out to St. Pete Beach and we went to like a couple little beach bars and hung out. I mean, nothing crazy. We weren't on the beach with like droves of people, but it was just casual enjoying Tampa and then we were all gone that following Monday after the league. Folded. Well, we're at the beach now up in this Destin area, and there's no one on the beach here. It's much nicer. We go on the beach. I fish. I mean, there's nobody here. Well, that's the so Panhandle. Yeah, that's I love like, that's uh, Fort Walton, Destin, yeah. uh, Panama, yeah, Panama City. City. The old Redneck Riviera. Yeah, they exactly. Call that's it. where yeah, people yeah. from Birmingham, when I lived in Birmingham, that's where people would go. They would drive from Birmingham all the way down to the Redneck yeah. Riviera, right. and that's like a five hour drive from Birmingham. But isn't that, that's a big spring break destination, too, right? Yeah, Panama yeah. City yeah. used to be huge. But, but I'm, I'm saying it's every weekend. Like, people drive to the Jersey Shore here in New York yeah. or wherever you are when you drive an hour to go to a beach. They drive five hours to go to Panama City and Destin and Fort Walton. I mean, then. Uh, well, I was in. When I was in Birmingham, which I was last well, with the AAF, I drove down here four hours, a four and a half hour drive. Yep. I wouldn't even do it just for just to get away. So even if I had like twenty four hours off, I'd just get away, spend the night, drive back the next night. But this, I mean, I'm in Fort Walton Beach area. This is really nice. Yeah, Plus, football really nice, players, man. guys are here. It's really nice. It's, it's a good catching spot. any mackerel out there off the beach, man? <laughs> catching any mackerel? We're about to. We're about to even get some redfish. That's, That's what I'm water, talking baby. about, man. I need to get on a plane right now. They're empty. I'm gonna yeah, come right. down there and just. Because, you know, if you can go to places where nobody is. Yeah, well, did you see Baldy took a trip? I think he's in, like, Hawaii or something. Baldy is always taking trips. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing he's in, new there. He's yeah. in Nepal <laughs> one day, and then he's in uh, <laughs> Pac-Man do. Well, the one place he has not gone back to this year, which he normally is goes, is Italy. Yeah. He's usually in Italy for months during this uh, and he, spring and summer. He always, he always has friends, like mm-hmm, a bunch yes. of friends. Like, it's always a posse. It looks like a great time to do anything. Yeah. With all these. Oh, <laughs> he's the best. He's the, I mean, he's like. I, well, it's that group. He calls them the travel dogs. That's yeah. his group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a name for his group. Oh, right? oh yeah. yeah. Travel dog, man. I want to become a travel dog. It's my aim in life to be part of that. When I die, I want Baldy be- to take me up to, the, to, to Nepal and bring me all the way up right. to Mount Everest and leave my remains up there. Shirtless jeans on, yeah. <laughs> with, with a bandana, yes. yeah, with a bandana, yes. yeah. and flip flops, with, with, with you on his shoulders doing like push up, like raising you up, yeah, there, like, and the up. Dalai Lama on the other shoulder. Yes. Before we go, I got to give you the breaking news. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people are stuck in their homes now because we have to be, and you no, know, a lot of people aren't working. But so, Robin and I, I put on all this weight from October right on through like the Super Bowl. Because I went through the surgery things, and we were going out and eating bar food three times a week, doing these shows, mm-hmm. right? And that we're puts eating. it on fast. Yeah, man. and so yeah. and then I was oh, shut, I was shut down with this with the surgeries, and so I put on I got up I blew up to two hundred and twenty pounds, and then finally Robin and I on March second when we went to ran into Bill Romanowski at the Super Bowl, he said, you know, you guys look like I said, yeah, Bill, we're we're like really in bad shape. We need to do something. So he put us on this keto diet with his nutritionist. I started at two nineteen and a half on March second. This morning I got on the scale, 205. I'm down 15 wow. pounds in this one Not month. If you're with me. And, yeah. that's, and, and a lot of people are, are doing the exact opposite now because you're sitting at home and you're eating cookies and ice cream like we used to do. We're doing the exact opposite. Not that we planned it this way, but we started the keto diet. diet. It's a little tough because you want carbs and your body craves carbs. But I'm telling you, man, it's working. I got 15 more to go, man, and I'll be down to 190, 190 and I'll be lean, mean. And a sports that, talk radio machine <laughs> once again. That deserves a roaring round of applause. Uh, absolutely <laughs> right, man. I'm glad you said <laughs> that. <knows> the, show. <laughs> <laughs> the great Colin Thompson to you, baby. To you. Thanks, Colin. All right, stay safe down there, man. But I know you Thanks, will. You're on Fort Walton Beach. We're in oh, South man. Philly. The great Colin Thompson. Thanks, brother. Colin Thompson. Guys, Thanks, Colin. Guys, be safe. Thank yeah, you. we need to do a remote from down there sometime. Absolutely, yeah. man. That's great. Have you been down there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quality stuff. And when, I, when I worked at the radio station, WSGN Music 610, back in 1977, Jan Jeffries was our program director. Uh-huh. And we would go down and rent a boat, a fishing boat. 
because I didn't have a boat down there. I was like 23 years old. And we would go out on a boat and go catching mackerel out there in the Gulf of Mexico, man. That's awesome. It was Tony, awesome. Before we and go snapper, and we, red snapper, we yeah. um, end the show. I know that we're going a little bit over, and we that's have okay, a Rob. We haven't had that show in almost two I weeks, know. and we want to uh, say, by the way, that we're not. This is the last show before April six because I have to disassemble. Dis- disassemble. Yes. 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 Disassemble the entire equipment that we have now. We're getting some new equipment in. We have stuff going in on the ceiling. So we need to clear out the space before filling up the space again. But we're we have one run. more All person. All the wires are going to come up through the board yeah. into the ceiling here. We're wow. Gonna have a, we're going to have like one of those uh, wire, ca- wire carriers that conceals them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then brings them up there. And then the mics will be dangling, dude. And you know how much we like dangling stuff right in front of our faces. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Let's be honest. But we have one more uh, friend of the show, Tony Bruno, that uh, has followed you and followed your career for a long time. Is it the great Jim in Cheltenham? No, no, it is another person of the same ilk who ilk? has, yes. Go, Jim from Abington? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hey, Tony, it's Vince from South Philly. Oh, it's a great Vince from South Philly. <laughs> A man hey, who's quick. been every major he was he and I grew up when they were building the vet. Everybody's making a big deal about the implosion of the vet. Right, the when I was a kid, they were yeah. building the vet, and I used to walk down there and watch him build it. That's how old I am. I was going to say, unfortunately, Tony, we're both also watching it implode under Larry Krasner and, and the like. Oh, absolutely, but that's the, another. Don't get real, me started man. now on yeah. Philadelphia <laughs> politics. Real quick, Tony, I was thinking, you know, with Harry Mays there. And by the way, Harry, great to hear you there. Thank um, you. I was going to say, that stupid coronavirus party or whatever it was in Jersey. Yeah, 47 I mean, people. There were 47 people in a 550-square-foot apartment. I thought it was 50. But anyway, close. 47 it's, people. It's amazing. I can't put 47 people in this house, and it's 2,000 square feet. Yeah. Yeah, we needed Harry to break it up by saying, get out, get out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But by, by the way, Tony, I have to go to that CVS there on Passchunk Avenue because they can't mail my meds out, so I have to take a risk and go out there. <laughs> Just be careful. Put the gloves on. Yeah, I got the gloves, My own, making my own plastic wraps or whatever. You got Probably Clorox wipes. You got, I went to BJ's. Robin and I went to BJ's Friday morning. They had the, you know these Clorox wipes. They come in a five-pack. Right, And I yeah. bought one. See, I'm not hoarding. I bought one five-pack of these. And I just gave one. We gave one to our Comcast guy, Justin, yeah. who our installer, and he didn't have one in his truck. I gave him one. I gave Harry Mays one of these. <laughs> this is like giving somebody $250 credit at Parks Casino or toilet online. paper. Or to- I have toilet paper. You need a roll? You need no, six no, pack? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 actually, I'm pretty good with supplies, thankfully. But uh, you Did know, you get so the Gabagool? Did you get the basic uh, Gudagin, Gabagool? Uh, Boil, uh, a boil a ham. Yeah, not a good Akeen guy. No. Mortadella. Did you get some mortadella? Wait, we have a Florida update via Dean regarding the same situation. There was a church this weekend in Tampa. The pastor <laughs> filled the church when he told everybody that he had a coronavirus killer. So everybody showed up, and they arrested the guy today. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Wow. What a freaking <laughs> idiot. That's not that same... Outfit your hood? No, 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 no. With no, no, is it? No. Yeah. My church is on the up Universal and up. Life Church. No, no my something. church the, is legit. Tony's church. They don't have actual physical churches. It's right. all independent. Everything ministers. is done virtual. well, virtually. <laughs> but no, I'm not virtual. I will actually show up when we're all safe to go out again. But he but does just not... stay at home and have fun. This, That's what I. This say. is the house of worship oh, right okay. here. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to build an altar. I'm going to build just like uh, I don't know if you saw. Is it in the episode you're up to now in the? Uh, in the Tiger, Tiger King, King. Hey, Vince, where they build him the throne. Hey, one more thing, real no, quick. I seen yes. that yet. One more thing, real quick, uh, Tony. As the great John Cheney always said, you can't teach stupid. Mm. You know, with all those things, these idiots. Uh, you know, with the parties and stuff. Exactly. So. All right. I'll see you guys next month. All right, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Thank the great you. Vince from South Philadelphia. We actually have one more. One, one more. more Harry, you got time for one more you call? Know, I haven't bitched about doing overtime. Today. I Did know. You notice that? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm impressed. It's been a long time, Harry. This, this is like a little. This is like a warm up. Yeah. This is like well, our no spring training. Too. No commercial. This is like spring training. Yeah. You know, and, and before we take the last call. Split squad. The one sport that's really going to be damaged the most. And I don't mean pe- fans won't come back. Because, you know, the NBA had to shut it down. Hockey. Yeah. We don't know if they're going to go back and play playoffs. They still have a chance to do that. 
But baseball, oh. now they're not talking about They're maybe talking about July to start oh, the man, season. I'll tell you. And I don't know how they – and they're working on it every day, trying to figure out double headers, trying to figure out oh, no off days, trying to play it into November. I heard something where they might, if they do play into November, they would move the World Series to like a neutral site. Yeah, they've got all That's things crazy. they have to think. Well, the other thing that they're going to do, because they can't start the season again – from the original schedule, because right. all the facilities... So which games get canceled? You the games I mean? that happen, they're going to pick the season oh, up so pick, where okay. the actual schedule resumes. Wow. Oh, wow. This way, they can't say, well, the opening day was supposed to be against you know the Atlanta Braves. They can't do that, because right. all the facilities have... There, those spaces are now no longer available for yeah. those dates. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So they would have to yeah, start the season. Logistically, it would be a total nightmare. Yeah, it would be a nightmare. total nightmare. Yeah. And now they're talking about playing, like, Four game series instead of three game series, mm. and playing a double header a week. Wow. So there's so many things, and but I don't know what happens if everybody likes this better. They won't like <laughs> it better, Robin. Well, the players won't like no, it. I'll but tell you people that. People like a shorter season. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, trust me, even good baseball fans. Exactly. Agree. Remember, 1995 long. during the lockout. That was at ESPN yeah. then. When it, in fact, we would have. John Sterling came up to ESPN and started doing weekend shows with us because he wasn't doing Yankee games. Exactly, yeah. because everything was shut down. So he came up and was one of our hosts on the weekends with us. And so 95, they did come back, and they played 144 games mm. when they came back. Now this, if they don't start till July, I don't know how, how they can get 144 yeah, games. I don't, I don't see that. Because I mean, we've already missed how many games? It was season would have started well, last week. We missed three months, April, May. No, but I'm saying so far we've missed a bunch of games. Yeah, the Phillies were supposed to start last week in Miami, I believe, right? right? Yep. So, yeah. again, I haven't looked at the breakdown. If you all have your own baseball schedules of teams that you follow, just look and look ahead till July 1st. Say it starts on July 1st. Remember, the All-Star game is supposed to be on from July. I had it written down the 15th. July uh, 13th to the 16th. Okay. That was the All-Star weekend. They may have to blow that off. Yeah. Because right. that's going to be a week where they're going to have to play games. Exactly. Re- regularly. So you games, can't yeah. pick All-Stars when you go back on the first to play that next we- weekend after right. and have an All-Star game. Well, it's going to be like with the PGA Tour. They're not, since the Olympics are canceled, right. they're going to use that week or two that w- they would have you know, had to send some guys to the Olympics to play a major. Exactly. They're probably going to stick a major in there. Exactly. So there you have it. So that's the, really, that's the story right now that is the one. You know, the, every, all these sports leagues, once we get back, and we don't know, but there's no doubt the league that will suffer the most yeah, because of the timing of this. Yeah. The NBA could still finish a shorter season and have the playoffs because yeah. they, they played more than half of their season at least. I wonder if... Hockey, the same thing. Yeah. If, if the quarantine lasts even a little bit longer, if at a certain point they're just going to say, well, we're just not going to have a season this year. Possibly. Yeah. 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 So that's, you know, in the world of sports where a lot of people are out of work, people who work in the arenas and stadiums mm-hmm. and the players and... You know, the players are taking care of it. They're, they're not, we don't have to worry about the players. No, no, they're good. They're, they're getting good. the testing done before anybody else. I mean, you saw what Drew Brees did. Yeah, $5 million. $5 million yeah, that's donation. Amazing. It's great. Um, we have, th- this is, seriously, this is the last caller. I, I'm closing down the, the uh, shut it down, Robin? after this because we still have a couple of little houseworking things to do prior to ending we the have, show. We have content but to do this, another five hours, Tony, Harry. Tony, we, we <laughs> spoke about him earlier in the show. This was the kid who at 11, 12, 13 was calling into the night. and Now he's all grown up, and he's he, older than me. He was so <laughs> worried that we weren't going to allow him on because he nobody else would allow that young of a kid to be on, and he loved you. His dad loves you. He went into broadcasting in college because of this. And now he's a senior at and, Indiana University. Oh, yeah, Bloomington? Yeah. Bloomington, wow. Indiana. He has the chair that Bobby Knight threw across, across the court many and years ago. he is now working for the Tony Bruno Show with Harry Mays nationally. I mean, who else gets to do this as a senior in college? The great Caleb on the line. Oh, goodness. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's, I, it's an honor to be a part of it. As you guys know, Harry, it's a pleasure to meet you here for the first time. And, awesome, uh, man. Good to yeah, have you. You know what? Go ahead. Sorry, Fortunately, I have no. the. Now let's go back. Now, when you called in into the night, you were you were what, twelve or thirteen? <clears throat> actually, uh, if you want, I can tell you. Uh, I actually remember the full first time I called in. Do you have it on tape, uh, by the way? <laughs> Maybe Jim from Cheltenham has your first call. Jim from Cheltenham probably might have does. It, it was the 2011 NBA draft. Uh, it was that day, actually. Uh, Who was the first pick in the 2011 draft? Do you remember? That was uh, the John Wall draft. John oh, Wall, wow. yes, Kentucky, yeah, yeah. The, the great John Wall draft. No one talks about a Keep Udo going sixth in that draft, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, 
I called. It was my uh, how old would I have been? It would have been like twelve. Oh no, yeah, it would have been like twelve or thirteen. And uh, he and I called in and said I wanted to talk about Paul George and how great he was going to be. Go figure. Who would have thought in twenty twenty that you know a harebrained kid calling in would actually be halfway right? That Paul George would have been better than Gordon Hayward. Mm. But you were still one of my first show calls. It was awesome. You let me come on the air, and you even told me at the very end. You said you know your stuff, Caleb. Give us a call anytime. And I've taken advantage of that after all these years. Well, luckily, because since then, I forbid uh, NBA calls, NBA talk on my show. So I've, tra- I've transitioned into no NBA talk since the process. You were pre-process, so everything was copacetic back then, right, Harry? Oh, I, you know, I love the NBA. <laughs> I love the NBA, too. You and I too. battled many times I don't times hate the NBA. the NBA. I don't hate the players. I hate no, the game. No, you, you, the you love the, the game. I love yeah. the players and the game. Yeah, I hate right. the hype. <laughs> and boom goes. You're not the kid who said, and boom goes the dynamite. Yeah. I want people to be perfectly no, that clear. That guy is probably now in his 40s and went to uh, Ball State, not the uh, the great Indiana University. Exactly. You're, not, you're not IUPUI. No. I that's in Pennsylvania. IUPUI. No, that's Purdue. That's Indiana, Indiana University. University. Purdue and U- University, and it's like Indiana in Indianapolis. University, Purdue University of Indianapolis. Yeah, you exactly. So right. you're, Caleb- at big, you're, at the, you're at the big the big boys. Right. So even though yeah, Caleb is in Indiana, people. he is going to be taking over um, and handling. He's going to commute every day. He's going to fly in <laughs> from Naptown, <laughs> and he's going to land it, and then we're going to pick him up, and he's going to sit here for three hours and handle our social media and any chicks that call. Well, you're getting married, too, right? Now you're engaged, aren't you? <laughs> no. Uh, the ladies on the show, I'm single here. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's no. what I want to make sure. All no, the single that ladies. was previous intern Hank. Intern right. Hank yeah. just got married. He just got married. Another yes. intern on our show. Okay. But uh, Caleb is going to be, um, he, he, you know, because now in college, this is one of their courses, is social media and how to make sure that it gets to more people and what you can do. So he's going to have access to all of the audio and the video. He's going to create clips. He's going to send them out. He's going to be on Twitter. He's And we're just going to let him do whatever he wants to do because he probably knows it better than we do. I'll make the Tony Tony Show 2020 compatible here. Beautiful, Beautiful. man. <laughs> Beautiful. So now you're a senior. Again, you're, you're graduating soon, right? No, yeah. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Have Maybe you done spring graduated. break during this pandemic? Now, what do you do in Indiana when you have spring break and you can't go anywhere? Uh, so I actually have a cat. Uh, her name is Ruth. Uh, it was good hanging out with her. And I actually live right next to uh, IU Bloomington has actually like four beautiful parks, and I live within walking distance of one. So that's what I would do in my off time on a nice day is just go out and go for a nice walk and attempt to be, you know, some of the <laughs> you know, stir crazy than your own house, right? Exactly. And especially when you're students now. So are you finishing everything online? Yeah, everything. I literally actually had my first online class actually as your guys' show was going on. So very weird. Uh, especially like one of the girls in the class. It's actually my radio slash podcasting class, by the way, Tony. Beautiful, man. Uh, so it is beautiful, yeah. Uh, I actually have a sp- – I'm working on a little sports podcast myself. Hopefully that will be coming out sooner rather than later. And who knows, maybe I could even have some cross-promotion on the no- new Tony Bruno Absolutely, show. Absolutely, man. We'll give you a segment. Oh, you'll give me a segment? No, I'm just wow. kidding. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> I may give uh, Harry a segment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, come on. Pissed off. <laughs> Well, Caleb, can uh, I would say congratulations, but we also at the same time thank you and uh, welcome to the family. We told him last night now, so we didn't. You know, this wasn't something that we late leaked out. Right. We tried to keep this on the down low. Yeah, we. I talked. Well, this to him was last embargoed. Night. Yes, it was yeah, embargoed, it like was. the old UPI AP yeah, college yeah, football co- right, polls. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I sort of mentioned to him like three weeks ago, and he replied, oh, I'm really excited, and then he didn't hear from me. So he probably thought, oh, man, they probably took somebody else. They're going to hire somebody else. <sighs> and then I called him last night. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know. Obviously, you mentioned it with the coronavirus stuff and the sports world kind of just being on hold. I didn't know what would be happening, you know, in the world of sports media. But I'm glad that you guys are uh, sports recession proof, if I may. Beautiful. Yeah, and out of all the people that were interested in that position, uh, we thought that having somebody that was here kind of for years and knows Tony's mind and cadence and, and, and was affected by it in his youth was the <laughs> perfect choice. And, of course, we'll have you get uh, our good buddy Pat and Indy, who's a regular listener, and, of course, Briny oh, yeah. Baird. Briny Baird. Baird, the great local Indi- Indiana golfer. Who still makes appearances? He's not on every. He's not at every stop. Right? He always wore a cool hat. The great Briny Baird. Yeah. yeah, 
Great well, name. Well, Caleb, too. thank you so much for calling in, and uh, we'll be hearing lots more from you. <laughs> All right. Uh, great show, uh, everybody. I can't wait to talk to you soon. There he is. Let's Thanks. put your hands together, Harry. How about that? This is the heartland of America here. You know what I'm saying? This is the flyover states that people don't seem to care about. Well, that's the thing. That, that Not on this show. might be the biggest adjustment, at least for me. I know you've done this for many years. The sort of the national scene to break out of just the Philadelphia thing is going to be a big adjustment for me. Now, you've done it with me before. And again, the thing, you know what it is? It's like the top stories in the sports right, world. Right, right. So we're I not think it's to, easier. I think it's easier, too. <laughs> and you know what else it is? It's not as tedious. Right, right, right. And again, I love local sports talk. That's where I, you know, I cut my teeth on it. But the, the one problem, especially in times like this, you have to be creative. Yeah. A lot of people are creative. I'm not saying I'm the only guy who can do goofy stuff. But when you have sports, and it's in Philly where the stations are programmed, where you can only talk about certain things because they believe that that's what people are listening to. And for the most part, they are. Right. But they don't allow other topics to be discussed. Mm-hmm. And that's the hardest part because it becomes tedious. Right. And you do the same it's thing. It's monotonous. Yeah, yeah it really Every is, day. Yeah. Tedious, man. Tedious. Yeah. And, and it gets tiring, not just for the audience. It gets tiring for the listeners. You want to keep it fresh, keep it real. I do and a lot of hosts. stuff. And the hosts. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember, uh, you know, I talked Mariota to the Eagles for four months before I know. the draft, and it never even happened. The process. Right. The process was yeah. over-processed. It, be, it started developing mold. That's how processed that cheese was. Fairweather and, Marvin is correct. Sports talk radio has got to evolve. And I think in a weird way... Sports talk radio needs to evolve into kind of what Tony has always been right, doing, right. which was uh, a little bit all over the place. Entertainment. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and it's more entertainment based because, like, we have constant. I mean, for the last I don't know how many years, we have been telling people, look, people can get the X's and O's from their cell phone in two seconds. And there's nothing wrong with you know the thing about digital media and content. You can get anything you want. Mm-hmm. If you want straightforward fantasy knowledge, if you want people to do fantasy with fun. Right. I mean, so that's the world we live in now. You can get anything it's you want on the internet. World. Exactly, yeah. and it's on the internet. If you yeah. want to learn how to fix something, you go on YouTube. So the, the content is there no matter what it is and what you want. And so that's the best part of this is that we can do what we do. I Have I evolved over the years? Yeah, I accept digital. I'm an older guy who understands the digital platform. I've been doing social media since 2009. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of older guys in my age group didn't embrace that stuff. They, they, they let the business, they, they were dealing with the past and how this industry worked. Right. And I always tried to stay fresh. I'm not some hipster. I'm not the guy, hey, I, I try to stay up on current affairs. Harry and I were all excited when we saw, you know, Drake today. Yeah. Unsheathed is a two-month-old baby. Before we go, we got to show those pictures, Robin. It was what, really the big what's story. What's his name, Adonis, I Adonis. think? Adonis. Yeah. That was my trainer down on 13th and Pastor back day when they had a boxing gym down there, a guy named Adonis. He used to train Joey Giardello back in the day and Joe Frazier (laughs) and all the great Philly fighters there, as you know. Matthew Saad Muhammad. Remember him? I don't remember him. You know what his original name was? This is great boxing knowledge, Jerry. What was it? It was, uh, see, now, uh, darn, I knew his name. I always would forget Matthew Saad Muhammad, but before he became Matthew Saad Muhammad, he just had a common name, like... You know, Muhammad Ali was Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay. Yeah, from Louisville. From Louisville. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar right. was Lou, Lou Alcindor. Alcindor. Yeah. Matthew Saad Muhammad. I'll look it up. Look it up, Harry, because, right. uh, you know, my brain is shot now. It happens. Well, we've been on the air for almost three straight hours. Nonstop. You would have had to have listened to 72 commercials in the time that we just broke it down for two Born and a half Born Maxwell Antonio Loach. But that wasn't the name that people knew him as. Well, I'm saying I looked up Matthew Saad Muhammad. What was American his fighting? American professional boxer. Mm-hmm. He was the light heavyweight champ in the WBC right. at one point. And, of course, from Philadelphia. He's, he's no longer living. No, I know that. But um, I'm saying when he became Matthew Saad Muhammad, his, his normal name, his regular boxing name. Matthew Franklin. That's right. Matt Franklin. Okay. He was known as Matt Franklin, who later became... Matthew Saad Well, Muhammad. he was born Matthew Antonio Loach, and I guess he used Matt Franklin as one of his other names. Exactly. And then became... Exactly. And then he converted to... Uh, to, to a Muslim. Yeah. To Muslim, yeah. and he became Matthew Saad Muhammad. Saad great, Muhammad. great local fighter. There's been wow. so many great local fighters. Actually. He was only 59 when he died. I know. Yeah, I didn't... I wasn't aware so of here, that. So here are... You wanted to talk about Drake? Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so Drake... Whoops. You turned my Sorry. mic off, Robin. How can Sorry. I talk about Drake? And Adonis. I, that was so, not so Drake had a child a couple of months ago. Yeah. 
But he waited till this week to put a picture of his young son. Beautiful kid. Beautiful. Yeah. He had beautiful hair. He's got hair like Peter Frampton in the 70s. I know. Right. So and so people, when they first saw the only photograph of him together, they yeah. were like, that's not your kid. Until they then showed side by side of Drake and his mother right, together. Right. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's his kid. So yeah. people see now the first picture is him holding his son, Adonis. Mm-hmm. Two months old. I mean, incredible hair. Yeah. And then there's a picture next to him of his mother. And his mother has the same exact hair, mm-hmm. and obviously he's Different a mixed color though. But well, so it's no, it's close. It's I mean, close. plus it's like Ron. What would you call that, Rob? He's only two months old, so his hair is probably no, going to change. Two more. years. Oh, he's two years old. Yeah, I'm sorry, years. I said two months old. Like I'm, I'm looking at it right there, the branded sports. That's yes. no, that, so that's, that's, that's a, not the mom. That's no, that's a, the baby no. mom. His mother, his mother. That's Drake's mother. So Drake's so Drake's mother. Not the mother, baby's yeah. mother. Okay, because I'm yeah. saying that baby's mother. No, so yeah. you're, you're yeah. blowing your head, Harry. So we got this all organized. Drake's oh. mother. So Drake's mother, who's obviously shorter, <laughs> okay. is, a, is a Caucasian woman, it, it appears. Yeah. Her name is... If uh, I had to take a wild guess, I'm saying is, she's Jewish because she's got the Jufro going her on. Her name is Sophie Brousseau. Brousseau. It doesn't sound that Jewish sounds French to me. To me. It she could, could be, be French. Why do you have Jewish. to automatically because she looks like Barbara Streisand? You're going to say you're going to say she looks Jewish? Not me. No, that's Robin. Say that. That's me. That's I'm Robin. saying that. But you know why? Because my my daughter's boyfriend has that hair, <laughs> and Robin he's went Jewish. Jufro. I Ju- did. She went all Jufro. On I us. didn't go Jufro. Jesus Christ! Which Robin. I actually am really looking forward to having little Jufro grandbabies. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm counting Nobody's on the fact. Nobody's looking forward to the Jew. Yes, I no. It's coming back. Uh, <laughs> Those little ringlet back. curls are adorable. Yeah. Exactly right. Come on, look at that face. But, look at Drake's face. The yeah, I never son's saw face. Drake's mom before. No, I didn't either. So yeah. we see the picture. And then there's a picture of him with his mom. Mm-hmm. And obviously he's a mixed race right. child. Yeah. And then the baby's a mix. So you got a double mix. Right, right. It's like going to Rita's Water Ice and you're getting the misto. Well, you get the mixture. You get the water ice and then you get the gelato sure. mixed in. I, and so now I this prefer. beautiful baby, and i got to say this, and Robin and I say this all the time, mixed-race babies Oops, are the most adorable babies oh gosh, on Earth. Yes. Are they not? They are absolutely He's gorgeous. He's a good-looking kid. kid. Yeah, yeah, most mixed-race babies are. So now... And now there's the baby mama. Here's yeah, now, the baby mama. And you attractive. know why that baby has grown up at two to be all grown and thick. Yeah. yeah. Because mommy Man. certainly was pumping out the... The mother's milk. The refrigerator was full. Exactly now, right. Is that... that bar was open 24-7, baby. <laughs> what, is, what is her name? I don't uh, know her name. I don't know. Anybody know? Jeff Bruder wants me to give Robin one of those for the Jufro well, comment. Yeah, here. you yeah. should. That's, I that's feel anti-tomatic. like I am entitled because of the fact that my daughter what, is... What, did you convert for the jokes? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Uh, Jeff Bruder also pointed out on the Twitch stream that Briny Baird wore that P.F. Chang's hat. That's that great. was the P.F. sponsor Chang's. on yes. this ad. It's safe to go in. They don't have bat soup in there, no, at least they... when you go into P.F. Chang's. And I hope they don't add it to the menu when everything comes back to normal. Oh, God. Although I saw somebody posted a can of Campbell's bat soup oh. over the weekend. That is fake, by the way. Good. And now, then, by the way, we have another picture. Because as a two-year-old, you know, these kids are playing, playing sports. Drake's a big sports fan. Yeah, you know? yeah. He changes allegiance every month depending <laughs> on which team, whether he's in Toronto or L.A. Well, he's like a curse, too. Yes, he is, the Drake curse. We have a picture of his son and his first soccer team. Is that right? This is got the future. We, we've gone in the future to get this, right? This is Drake now when his son, Adonis, grows up and starts playing soccer overseas. Mm. Let's get this picture In the Premier up. League? In the Premier League. Yeah. Yes, I think this is, but not Belarus. Can we open that baby up, Rob? No, that's a it's different that- league. Belarus. That's small. I want to make it big. It is big for make it everybody. Big. How it's... many guys have had to say that? Could you make it big, please? It's big for everybody else but you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's right there. Yeah. There's Drake's son. One of these. Ten years from now is not like when he's the putting other. the he's putting the ball be in the wicker, in the wickets, in the net, hitting the back of the net, doing bicycle kicks, while Dad is there screaming at him. Put the damn in thing the in the basket uh, in the front row. <laughs> oh, Play Action Reel says Sophie Brousseau is Drake's baby mom. Oh, okay. So his, his that's not mother, his, mom. his 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 biological is she Mama Drake. Mom is What's her name? Aren't else. they Cranes, Mama Drakes? Uh, let's. No, see. Cranes are male Drakes, right? Or Drakes are male squa- swans, right? A Drake is a male swan. No, no a Drake I is a male Drake's is cupcakes. a uh, male uh, duck. Are Isn't you sure it? it's not a swan as well? What is a drake? A drake is a male duck. A male swan. It's a cupcake. No, no I know that. Drake's it's a male cakes. duck. I so it's right. a male duck? Yeah. A male swan is something else. What's a male swan? Swan is a... 
Man, you lost me on this one. I don't know. I don't know. We got to get this shit straight now. Now, we can't leave a thing hanging out there. We can't leave it hanging. What is a male swan? I'm looking. I do, is a swan is a swan is a swan, it looks yeah. like. I, it doesn't look like there's, there's any There's a other... whoopee swan. Isn't she on The View? <laughs> is that still on? Yes. I there's a black know. swan. Well, that was a movie, wasn't it? Yeah, but there's yeah. really black swans, oh, too. Are? Did you yeah. watch that on Netflix? No, I black swan? That. Did you watch that, Rob? No. I heard oh, there was a, is a male a pretty good, swan. Uh, there go. Robin, a male Erotic swan is what? A cob. A cob. C O B. Yeah, it's called a cob. There cob. It is. Yeah. And the female ah. is called a pen. P E N. I wow. I did not see what you learned on the show, huh? This is deep. I did not, and then the little babies. What are know, they called? Uh, well, after a year, they're called cygnets. Cygnets. Yes. I went to my insurance company before they let me go at 97.5, and I was left without coverage. I used to oh. have a Cygnet ring. <laughs> Isn't there a build? Oh, it's Cigna. That's Cigna, Cigna. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they have, rev- by the way, they're not charging people co-pays to go get the uh, test. Is that right? Cygna and Humana. Yeah. By the way, if you're looking That's for- That's impressive. I, I got to give a shout out. I mean, I'm sure that there's going to be something that people are going to find to blame, about, but I think that's pretty awesome. And hopefully every other insurance company follows suit. And by the way, why did you have to bring up Drake's Cakes? You know how much I'm carving, oh, cr- they're good. craving carbs right now? Well, yeah, you know what else they make? They make that. ring dings. Right, don't they? right. I love the ring dings. Oh, I grew up on ring dings. And the yodels. Didn't the they yodels. Do the yodels, too? Yes. Yeah. The chocolate covered ones. Mm-hmm. And the ring dings were my favorite oh. as a kid. I'd have a, I'd put it in the freezer. See, now, is that, isn't that a violation, though? Because you should have been a tasty cake guy. I did everything. I did tasty cakes. <laughs> I did Drake's cakes. Ring dings were always in the. In the front of the little uh, nickel and dime stores, where you go in and buy yeah. a loose cigarette, and for the a yodels were cylindrical. They yeah, were, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, those were good. They were like the things that people eat, the Twinkies, except they had c- chocolate covering. Yeah, I didn't like the Twinkies. I didn't too eat. Much. I never liked it. Yeah. Gave me dry mouth. That's why all those stoners do. Oh yeah. All right. Eat the Twinkies. Tony, is it time to go? It is time to go. I'm going to post the Wawa Kitty video later. We don't need to play that right now. Yeah, we it have a cat already... who wants, who loves. You know what they say at Wawa, right? Mm. Got to have a Wawa. Got to have a yeah. Wawa. Yeah. One of our cats has to have a Wawa. Robin will post that video yes, on that the right? website, at Tony Bruno Show on Twitter. The website has the, all the new information on there, TonyBrunoShow.com, with all the serious XM news. Serious Channel, 211, the Dan Patrick Channel, Monday, 3 to 6 p.m., every weekday, on the Dan Patrick Channel. Again, Sirius XM, Channel 211, and on the Sirius XM app, Harry. Beautiful, man. And um, No, that, so I can't oh, eat them because they're have, not keto-friendly. I have one question for you that I saw somebody else ask. Now, have either of you ever done the 3 to 6 p.m. shift? Uh, not permanently. I, I you know, filled in. I've, filled done, in. I've done it in, in L.A. for a while, but mostly mornings. I mean, I've yeah, always you've been, been morning. mostly mornings, and then you had the end-of-the-night gig for a while, mm-hmm. and then you guys mid-days. were mid-days. And then Mid, yeah, Harry and I yeah. did mid-days yeah. most of yeah. the time. So yeah. this is going to be sort of... New, even for both of you, for this, uh, you know, and we're but hoping. But the best part is, you know, we won't be rehashing like the last night stuff. We can look ahead right. and talk about stuff and give you like fresh, fresh perspective. Mm-hmm. Beating stories to death 24 hours after they're over. That's not our game here. AJ no. Marcos, no. yes. Nobody played this that. is three, I mean, uh, three to six p.m. Eastern, Eastern time, time, which would be noon to three Pacific, specifically yes. speaking. And Monday through Friday, Sirius XM channel 211, which is the Dan Patrick radio channel. And uh, we are very excited to be joining the family. And it's starting next Monday. And as the weather gets better, and even though Harry doesn't have to worry about the coronavirus because he can still get out on the golf course, you can get 18 in probably. Well, sometimes. yeah, that's because it's uh, the best way to social distance. Exactly yes. right. Seriously. Yes. It's just you and the and the, you just you spanking Whitey out there. Exactly. And Whitey's not is about six feet away, depending on how you sit you set up the driver. Exactly. Okay, now I really have to pee, so we got to close. Right, the we got to shut it down. <laughs> All right, great to see you. <laughs> yeah, man. It's Thank great. you everybody for tuning in today. Uh, the great day, great news. Frank Caliendo, incredible, tremendous. He was great. incredible, and all of you listeners out there. Thank you so much. Colin Thompson called Colin in. Colin Thompson, Temple University's own. Dean Temp- from Clearwater. Dean, all of our great callers. Caleb. Do we give Caleb's last name? Andrews. Andrews? Mm-hmm. Like the Andrews sisters? Yeah. That's a good comment. That's a radio name. Caleb Andrews. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Cracking them out today. In the meantime, don't drink and drive. Wear protection. Wash your face. Wash your uh, nether regions. Get yourself Manscaped, too. No, we are not on tomorrow. We are not going to be on again until the debut of the new show, Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're shutting it down? Yes, we are. That's it? 
And guess what? We're not going out I and playing to- golf either. We're in here busting our ass. We're going to have ceiling mics. I have shit to do to get ready, man. Damn right. In the meantime, don't drink and drive out there. Stay at home and have fun. You know what to do. Don't do stupid shit. Don't eat bats, first and foremost. Exactly. Even if they tell you that the bats are clean and they've been pasteurized and homogenized. They're not keto-friendly, They are the not keto. Actually, they are, sadly. Oh, they are? Yeah, <laughs> probably. They probably Just are. Very low carb, I'm sure. <laughs> high protein in those bats. <laughs> and high virus content, too. Oh. Harry Mays, Tony Bruno, we'll see you back here on Monday. Right here on Twitch.tv and on Sirius XM 211, the Dan Patrick channel. Have a great week, everybody. God bless America. It's still the greatest country on earth. This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. Maybe in our world here, we live a happy little mountain. Thank you for listening to the Tony Bruno Show on Bruno Nation Live. Don't forget to subscribe on the Twitch mobile app so you don't miss any of Bruno Nation's hilarity and hijinks because it is definitely must-watch radio. Of course, you can catch the archived audio on your favorite podcast app like Spreaker or iTunes. Plus, if you subscribe via Twitch, you can watch any of our archived videos. We hope to see you back here every Monday through Friday. See you soon.